The following is a presentation of ESPN on ABC. This fall afternoon gives way to a frosty evening in the heart of Ohio. Welcome to Ohio Stadium and this crucial collision between the Buckeyes and the Cornhuskers. ESPN Saturday Night Football on ABC presented by Walmart. Both Nebraska and Ohio State come in in contention, controlling their destiny in their respective divisions of the Big Ten Conference, both ranked in the top ten of the first playoff committee rankings this week. And welcome to Columbus. Chris Fowler for Curb Street. Samantha Ponder will join us. Any visit to this place is special. Not to tell you that. <laughs> but this game tonight with both Nebraska and Ohio State in control of their divisional destinies. Cornhuskers got no favors from Wisconsin. Keeps the pressure on by winning this afternoon. I, I think that's the thing this week that maybe got a little bit overlooked. Everybody's talking about the rankings at Ohio State and what's at stake for them. But for Nebraska, right now with one loss in conference play, if they can win tonight, a major obstacle, they they put themselves in a great position to get to Indianapolis over Wisconsin. And the other for Ohio State, let's face it, this is a team that's kind of been searching for an identity, searching to kind of find that nucleus and, and find the rhythm that's been missing, especially on the offensive side of the ball for the last three weeks. They're going to try to find it tonight. You might have heard that Michigan comes here in three weeks. Urban Meyer wants the focus right now on this game. Two quarterbacks tonight are both veterans, both Texans. They have similar skill sets, very different personalities. Can JT Barrett get it going tonight? Well, JT Barrett, I think you're going to see him obviously have to use his feet and do what he does best, which is create. You and I have called the Penn State and Wisconsin game many times. He was improvising, trying to create to make things happen. This was last week against Northwestern, and this is what I think Ohio State will do at times is they're going to have to run it. Noah Brown picks up two big blocks here, and on the perimeter picks up the corner. Then he picks up the safety, and those two blocks really sealed the victory for Ohio State late in that game as they were able to run out the clock. Then on third down tonight, can they protect him? Can they give him time? Something that has been a, a problem against some of the teams at Penn State and Wisconsin because when they do give him time, he's able to evaluate the secondary and, and make very accurate throws. But can they do that on third down against a Nebraska defense that is determined to try to continue to give this Ohio State offense fits and try to continue to affect the rhythm that they've been searching for? They are somewhat frustrated. Over the last couple of weeks, no Power 5 quarterback has taken and fewer downfield shots than JT. Nebraska's secondary was awful last year, much better this year. Now to Tommy Armstrong, a quarterback who's making his 42nd career start. When he's good, he's good. When he's bad, he throws interceptions. Well, when he's good, he's he's good as a combo threat. And it's really, he comes in as a background as an athlete, a guy who can run the option. And you have Mike Riley now in his second year, who's more of a West Coast guy. But they've done a good job of blending the two. You're going to still see the dual threat. You're going to still see option, zone read with him getting on the edge and he has tremendous speed and very good power for a quarterback he'll have to be effective running the ball but to me if they're going to win tonight they've got to be able to throw the ball downfield the vertical threat it's probably the best throw that Tommy Armstrong makes he's going to have to be able to look for some one-on opportunities because Ohio State plays either man-to-man -man or quarters coverage which means their corners are on islands he will have a chance to make plays and look for early downs with Armstrong going downfield to try to hit those big plays kind of like what Penn State did over in Happy Valley and the Huskers by taking Wisconsin to overtime on the road last week even though they lost they gained confidence here we shall see who's going to survive. And both teams kind of start slowly, but you get to the fourth quarter. These are two teams that have worn opponents down, two of the best fourth quarter teams in the country. We hope we get a nice close one. In the state of OHIO, there's no higher honor than dotting the I. Senior sousaphone player Clay Worsing from Upper Arlington, a welding engineering manager, has the honor tonight. you got to love that. Cornhuskers and the Buckeyes from Columbus coming up in just minutes. The old horseshoe in the banks of the old Intangi. The Nissan pregame rush with Stan Verrett, Mac Brown, and Mark May is next. After this message and a word from our ABC stations. And welcome back to this presentation of the Big Ten on ESPN. Just about set for kickoff on this beautiful evening in Columbus, Nebraska, and Ohio State. Second season guiding the Cornhuskers for Mike Riley. He's with Samantha Ponder. 
Now, Coach, I know it's your first time here, believe it or not, after all these years. So what do you make of the challenge your team is up against tonight? Well, I think, first of all, uh, the, the team, the other team is pretty good. They are, uh, that's a good football team. Their environment is awesome. So we'll have to handle the noise, all the crowd, all that, and not be overwhelmed by it, and then play against a good team. Really looking forward to seeing my team play. Coach, despite the overtime loss against Wisconsin, it sure seems like your team is gaining confidence every week. So how would you describe where your team is most confident tonight? You know, I think that they've gained confidence through the fact that we've won games late. You know, we haven't always been very pretty, but we've played our best ball down the stretch, given ourselves a chance to win and won most of them. So I think they, they respond to that and they feel they can do that. They're very, very competitive. Well, we're looking forward to it. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate your time. Chris? Sam, thank you. Wiley, considerably more relaxed at this moment than his counterpart, Urban Meyer. Fair to say, Kurt. Yeah, Urban's, I think, going to cover this opening kickoff on the other side. Buckeyes won the toss, deferred, so Nebraska will get the ball first, and Tyler Durbin have booted away. And Trey Bryant, the true freshman, tries to get the Cornhuskers good field position, knocked down at the 25, and here comes Tommy Armstrong. Kirk, we talked about this experienced guy who's won 29 games for the Cornhuskers. Yeah, as, as you starter. said earlier, Chris, 42nd career start. Look at his size, 6'1", 220, came in as an athletic quarterback. Tonight, accuracy, so important for him. He's struggled in that area the last few games. Needs to use his feet on third down. And as we said in the open, the deep ball, taking some shots downfield to a very talented and deep group of wide receivers who will be isolated one-on-one -on -one quite a bit tonight against a man-to-man -man coverage from Ohio State. Jordan Westerkamp, the quarterback's roommate, the receiver, comes in motion. Terrell Newby is the running back and the senior from Los Angeles, the short game. Sometimes this Husker ground game gets a long time before they kind of get momentum. Yeah, they're going to need to be able to take some of the pressure off that passing game. We look at our, our impact players, the Chick-fil-A impact players. We have Jordan Westerkamp, Chris, uh, on the outside. He's battling through some injuries. Key, Stephen Carter, number 11, a tight end is back. He is key for being able to make plays in the passing game. Tyquan Lewis, tremendous speed off the edge. And carry on Conley, a corner who moves to the nickel tonight. Some will play one on one against Westerkamp. And second and seven. Newby tries the middle and moves the pile. It'll set up a third down and three. Let's see. Getting it to third and three on the road. First possession. Key for Tommy Armstrong because this this really puts Danny Langsdorf as a play caller and Mike Riley in a much better position where the quarterback run threat is still in play. The zone read game is still in play, or they have the option to throw it. So they, they really can expand the playbook here on third and short. This offensive line did a pretty good job against the noise in Camp Randall. They face it again tonight. It's loud. Armstrong. That play was messed up from the start, and it's picked off. Damon Webb's got it. Webb heading for the end zone. Cuts it back, eludes Armstrong, and a pick six. That is the fifth pick six for Ohio State this season and a disastrous start for the Cornhuskers. Yeah, and I think this is a tight window. We'll give you a, a lot of different looks at this, but third down and three, a risky throw by Tommy Armstrong here early in the game. Not just a corner, but the linebacker Raquan McMillan also may have gotten a hand on that football. Durbin for the conversion. In a minute 34 into this game, the Cornhuskers are behind by a touchdown. Now, this is tight coverage. You mentioned third and three. You got a chance. You got to get the ball out with Ohio State's pass. Look at Raekwon McMillan right there. He gets his right hand up. He may have influenced it as, as well as Mark Marshawn Lattimore, the corner. And, of course, Webb is there to find the football. And he's opportunistic. Watch Raekwon McMillan here. Watch him get his hand on this. Does he touch the ball? He sure does. That obviously impacted it didn't allow the receiver to come up with it ball goes straight in the air and in the middle of the field when the ball goes up into the air that's no man's plan and the defense is going to jump on it morgan really never had a chance to make a play on the football because of the tip there by raekwon mcmillan he's the progressive pylon cam armstrong whiffing on the tackle webb a tremendous athlete set of whoop 
Jukeson, Armstrong Kirk, now 44 career interceptions. That's a huge number. He started a lot of games since early in his redshirt freshman year, but nobody in the Power Five who's active has more picks than, than Tommy does. No, and again, I, you got to remember, he, he came in as more of his own read, a dual threat guy, and, and has been asked to, to really kind of pick up more West Coast principles in the passing game, and still has to kind of settle into this game for Nebraska. Well, it's a real test of poise. You go on the road, and in a minute and a half, you're giving up a pick six. You've done exactly what you don't want to do. Yeah, and, and you get you get really to where you want to be, considering that how loud the environment is. You're third and three, and because of his his variety of plays, and because he can attack you in so many different ways, and because it's the first possession, that, that's a high percentage throw. It's a heck of a play by Raquan McMillan to get a hand on that. If he if he doesn't get a hand on that. The ball's probably just either a completion or, or ball's knocked down by the corner, but it's not going to be intercepted. McMillan forced that interception. This is Newby in the first down run. Armstrong is generously listed at 6'1", not the tallest guy. When he stands in the pocket like that, teams like Wisconsin, for example, last week, were able to get their hands on his passes and, and frequently influence them. No doubt about it. We saw that last week against Wisconsin. A Kind of a game within a game, Chris, is the right side of the offensive line. You have two backups, 58, Corey Whitaker is in the game, and Cole Conrad, who's in for David Neville, in the game on the right side. Armstrong... Likes to roll out. Pretty good thrower on the run, but this one is incomplete to try to get it to Alonzo Moore. No chance there. Chased by Denzel Ward. Third and seven. Smart to try to move him, kind of move the launch point, get away from the Ohio State pressure. But now this is this is where you want to avoid being all night. It's third in obvious passing situations. Tommy Armstrong's got to be smart. Ohio State's strength is a defense. Maybe when they get you to third down, how they apply pressure just with rushing four defensive linemen. They don't have to blitz to get to you. Watch out for Taekwon Lewis at the bottom, 59. From the pocket, Armstrong takes a shot downfield. Westerkamp trying to come up with a terrific catch. Here comes a flag for interference. There's a battle on the edge there with Gary and Conley. That's interference. Defense number eight. 15 yards to the previous spot. Automatic first down. We just talked about that matchup. Gary and Conley is a corner, but they've moved him to nickelback to create this matchup one-on-one, -on -one, and you see the head of Conley. That's the key. You're seeing the battling going back and forth with the hands. The receiver and the corner are both battling. It's not just the arm grab there. It's the jostling back and forth, and it's the placement of the head by Conley. If his head is turned, he's entitled to fight for the football. When his head is not turned, they're going to make that call. Moves the ball to the 43, first down. Armstrong keeps it. Nice to bounce to the outside. He's not a very quick guy, thickly built. He'll you know, scramble and scamper for a first down, but they've seen quicker quarterbacks in Ohio State. Yeah, and, and you'll find that, that the zone read game is something that Ohio State's had to practice because of the respect they have for Tommy Armstrong. They want to string it out, and that time that's exactly what they were able to do. Tommy, Tommy Armstrong has such quickness, but he also has power, so he needs to put his foot in the ground and get upfield. Hard to get wide against the speed of the Ohio State defense, especially when they play at home at night. Guys show some pressure and bring it up the middle. It's a screen into traffic, and Newby was well covered. That wasn't going anywhere. Jerome Baker was right on him. Now the timing just never had a chance. You know, when you're throwing a screen, it's a smart call against the team that's pressuring. But watch this. Watch how quickly they're in there. Newby's not even turned around, and if he is, there's a linebacker, Chris Worley, waiting for him. So Ohio State's linebackers doing a good job sniffing it out, but the pressure got to Armstrong before that play even had a chance to develop. Kirk, they bring in Nick Bosa, the talented true freshman, has four sacks already. They call this the Rushman package. You get four defensive ends in there. Armstrong fires off his back foot. Westerkamp tips it, and it's caught by Stanley Morgan. Teammate to teammate, it somehow creates a huge play to the Ohio State 30. Well, sometimes you've got to be able to be lucky to be able to make things happen. This time, 
Pretty tight coverage. He throws it up. Westerkamp, I don't know. It almost looks like he intentionally. <laughs> Look at this it with the right hand. On that, right? Yeah, of course. Ball is knocked over and heads up play there by Stanley Morgan. 26 yard gain on third and nine. Morgan coming off a big game against Wisconsin. Tommy Armstrong took a big hit that time from Draymond Jones, the freshman defense alignment, but did get the ball off. Newby with some nice blocks, cuts and spins and gets inside the 25. Here's the hit you were talking about. Yeah, and these hits start to add up as the game goes on. And Tommy Armstrong is incredibly durable. We talked about the fourth quarter, how he's led this team, and they have been the most dominant team in the country in the fourth quarter. But Ohio State's their mission up front is try to affect Tommy Armstrong, make him win the game from the pocket, throwing the football. You're right, he is durable. 42 career starts. Only missed one game in his career to injury. He's played through a ton of ankle pain. It's a recurring problem for him. Armstrong retreats, flips it in the middle, and the catch is made inside the red zone. Not now they say incomplete. Sam Cotton didn't quite hold it long enough for a catch. Malik Hooker influenced that. The officials are actually going to come together. One official called it a completion. And the umpires waving it off, saying an incompletion. They're actually going to spot the ball, and, and for now, they're going to give him the completion. Now they're going to move it back. <laughs> the little disagreement down there between the officials, so it will, in fact, set up third down. He's just trying to put the ball away when Hooker got the hand in there. If it, if it, if it was a catch, it was a fumble and an Ohio State recovery. As it is incomplete, third and five. Armstrong on a slant. Westerkamp, a clutch catch and a first down in the red zone. He trusts this guy, Kirk, so it's a it's a good thing the ankle's good to go tonight for Nebraska's and cause. Despite the injuries, Chris, he run, he's such a great route runner. I mean, he's battled through the back injury. He told me on the field before the game, he got rolled up on early in the game last week in Madison, and yet so consistent, and I think Tommy trusts him on those routes, and that's a major conversion here early in this game on third down. Keeper. Once again, tries to get wide. Has a little bit better success before Hooker forced him out. It's a nice job of making the right read on the zone read. The defensive end took the running back and gives you an indication of how quickly he can accelerate and get around the corner. This will be the tenth play coming up on this drive for Nebraska. Said it earlier, they're so intent on just getting something on first down, even if it's three, four yards. Staying ahead of the count. Keeper again, Hubbard chasing him, Armstrong. And a muscles back, and they'll have a third and makeable here just outside the 10. Going back to it, that's kind of a win for Tommy Armstrong in Nebraska. He's going to have to carry the load tonight. He's going to carry the ball a lot because it's tough sledding right now in the interior. Not just tonight, but the last few weeks, Nebraska's had more success running on the edge. Whether it's been Newby getting out there or it's been Tommy Armstrong running, more success. But because of the success on that play, now again, they're back to that third and three where he can run the football. And third and similar distance to the interception, though, in the first series. Trey Bryant, the true freshman, is the back to the left of Armstrong. Slant, catch, first down. And that's Seathan Carter, the senior tight end, who's coming back from an injury and a key part of this offense. And that's a mismatch going to the slant, matched up against a safety because of his size, 6'4", 240 pounds. This is exactly what this offense has missed. Surprised that Malik Hooker was so soft in coverage on third down and three. Throws it in rhythm, ball's a little bit behind, but that Carter's, they've missed him because of his the way he can create mismatches Flexed out is almost like another receiver. You see that brace on the elbow. That's been the problem in recent weeks. First and goal. Newby. Immediate penetration, and he's stopped behind the line of scrimmage. 
Sam Hubbard involved, as well as Baker. How about Tommy Armstrong making his 42nd start? Opens the game on the road with so much at stake with a pick six. They come right back the very next possession. The luxury of having a veteran quarterback. They put the ball right in his hands. And here he is throwing the ball six more times. Three of six, 42 yards, moving the ball downfield. 13th play. It shows you, even in this environment, how much they trust Tommy Armstrong. We sure do. Ohio State, though, very stingy. Tough to score on down in this area. Armstrong on the move, fires back of the end zone, just nobody there. They are difficult to beat in coverage in this area and tough to run it in on. Well, they're the best, deep, second best defense in the country and how few touchdowns they allow in the red zone. Second, the, I mean, think about that and how few times that they've allowed, what, eight touchdowns in 24 attempts down inside awesome. here. So they do a great job with coverage, tight man coverage. And Tommy Armstrong's ability to create or the matchup with a big tight end, Carter, who's off to the, to the right side here, would be key. They've converted three third downs on the drive. He looks that direction, flips it over the head of Carter, who was well covered by Damon Webb, but you spotted the matchup they tried to create. It's fourth down, though. Yeah, 6 4 tight end going up against a safety who's 5'10". Even though you know it's coming, a little out and up, give him a chance. You see the pressure. Holmes got in there, hit him right as he released. It probably affected the accuracy of it, but just a little bit too high. You like the idea of Armstrong putting it up in the air to give the 6'4 tight end a chance, but just, a, just missed him a little bit too high. Here's Drew Brown, very reliable kicker. A junior from Texas. And the chip shot. So, Nebraska steadies itself after that pick six a 15 play 72 yard drive but couldn't punch it in settle for three our AT&T inside access takes you inside the Woody Hayes Center where Urban Meyer has put red paper over all the other games on the schedule except for this one last week same thing was Northwestern next up Maryland Michigan State and then of course Michigan comes in here in the past Urban was one of the more big picture type coaches he would talk to his team about the playoff situation you're not out of it but he said Kirk with this kind of young team he didn't want that he wants only one game at a time focus he has one senior that plays on offense none that really play much on defense it's one of the youngest teams in the country the rankings came out all the talk from the world and the outside of the Woody Hayes facility for, for any of the teams in the top 10 is about that he, he's saying let's not worry about the playoff rankings or the Big Ten championship. Let's worry about trying to play against a very good Nebraska team. That makes sense. But in the past, oh, yeah. he did used to talk about those things. Oh, yeah. We had a veteran team a couple of years ago. He tried to make them very aware. Sure. Of well, he's trying to push their buttons and challenge them. Yeah. And this year, it's a different, a different uh, animal. Harris Campbell has been nursing an injury back on the kickoff return. Looks pretty healthy there as he bounces off a blocker, heads for the sideline, and will set up the Ohio State offense in good field position. And we'll finally see JT Barrett. Nebraska has run 17 offensive plays, but because of the pick six, we haven't seen JT yet in midway first quarter. Saturday Night Football, presented by Walmart. Save money, live better. And in part by Chick-fil-A. We didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. And Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy. See the sousaphone guy with the Cheetos there? You want to say fan? Yeah. Here comes JT. JT Barrett, the leader, the veteran. Also big, 6'2", 222 pounds. He's got to find his rhythm early, his accuracy. Zone read, quarterback design run will be big. And just be the X factor. He's trying to get Ohio State, who's kind of been stuck, trying to find that, that rhythm we talked about. Tonight, they've got to be able to run the ball between the tackles and try to hit the ball, the throws downfield, something they've really struggled with, as you see here in the last month. They're right back to throw in the first play and delivers a strike. Curtis Samuel. Dances free, gets near the marker. They'll mark him just short. Chris Jones on the stop. Last week against Northwestern, no touchdown passes or runs. First time in his career he wasn't responsible for a touchdown. He's the all-time record holder. Yeah, at Ohio State. You, you kind of get spoiled and kind of get used to that. But that time, capitalizing on first and ten, a good throw, high percentage throw, soft coverage. He throws in rhythm, puts it right on the money. 
Now let me give it to Samuel on the end around and a flash from Brooklyn dances down near the 30 yard line. Two plays and two touches for the most versatile guy in this offense. It's funny we're going to talk here early in the, in the broadcast about some of the keys that Ohio State has to to do to try to get that rhythm going. And one of the things that I talked about was maybe up to 20 touches tonight whether it's running the ball or, or catching the ball. This is Mike Weber following blocks around the right end. Samuel, by the way, the only player in FBS to have 500 yards plus in rushing and receiving, averaging nine and a half yards per touch. Yeah, per touch. So what do you do to try to get this thing going for Ohio State? Control the line of scrimmage, the vertical pass game, Curtis Samuel, try to get him 20 touches and win the turnover margin, which they already got off to a big start. Weber, after some confusion, motions out to the left, and there's a short gain just across the first down marker is Marcus Baugh. There's a flag, though, at the line of scrimmage. There is no foul for an illegal shift on the previous play. Second down. Well, if they, if they call the catch, the ball's at the 21, and it's a first down. This is the most aggressive. I've seen Ohio State in the last few weeks, and I think it has a lot to do with where they started their field position on their own 43. When they played Wisconsin and Penn State and Northwestern, a lot of times they're inside their own 20. Samuel. And he's straight out and drop him for a one-yard loss. Good job by the Husker defense. And uh, another flag is down. Yeah, they, they do a great job of stretching this. You see them. White white jerseys flying to that football. Boy, their inside linebacker Josh Banderas will be incredibly active when Ohio State runs the ball tonight. Holding, Holding. offense number 65, 10 yards from the previous spot. Repeat first down. That's a rarity. Pat Elfline, in the center, is candidate for the Remington Award. He's the best at that position. Yeah, he pulled around and you see him off to the right. You see him pulling around. The big center locks up with a nickel back. Aaron Williams. This Brings him down to the ground, pulls him down to the ground. It's a big man pulling around. You don't see centers pulling that often. He's athletic enough to pull it off. Used to be a guard. It was a body slam there. <laughs> it sure was. First and 20. Empty backfield for Barrett. And Rooks left has a lot of time. Delivers back to the right. And Baugh, athletic tight end, collects it for a short gain back to the 26, covered by the safety Aaron Williams. <laughs> Pretty good example there of JT Barrett working through his progressions. He started left, came back to the middle to Curtis Samuel, and then eventually came all the way back to ball to the right. And the offensive line, for a quarterback to be able to do that, they did a heck of a job that time of protecting him and creating that pocket. Second and 15. Huskers bring the pressure. Barrett escapes, and now he's got room. Fires into traffic, and it's Ball who makes the catch. Now they say incomplete at the 11-yard line. Hard hit by Josh Kalu, the corner, but somehow JT avoided the sack. And Rose Ivy came and surprised Ohio State. They didn't have anybody there. He's going to bring the pressure right here. Ball's going to work across. But how about JT Barrett? Nobody picks him up. He's able to just get underneath him, buys the time, and then dangerous throw, but tried to slip it in there. And it's play by Josh Kalu to knock that ball away. First third down play for Ohio State. They need 15. Got to hurry. And. I don't think anybody on the sideline yeah. noticed either. Live game, offense. Unusual, they wouldn't step in and call a timeout. They were still trying to get set when the play clock ran out. It's surprising. You have JT Barrett, who's almost because of his experience, like an offensive coordinator on the field, and you have coaches who can make that call from the sideline. Nobody aware of the play clock running down. Cost Ohio State five yards and could ultimately affect a, a potential field goal. Ed Warner and Tim Beck share the play calling responsibilities. Warner is the primary one. Beck, of course, was at Nebraska, an assistant Nebraska. to both Polini They're for first. nine years. So JT seemed to want that call a little quicker to come in from upstairs. <laughs> and now we'll take a break here on third and 20 as the Huskers spend one to Cassidy Hubbard for a studio update. Hi, Chris. Hi, Herbie. 
Taco Bell Studio update, number 12, Men's State, Penn State rather, looking for their third straight win over Iowa. And Saquon Barkley, 57-yard touchdown run. They've since tacked on another TD. Penn State up 21-0 in the second. Chris, Irby, back to you. It's like that block field goal for a touchdown to beat Ohio State it, took it, Penn State to another level or it's two. It ignited them. Big week last week. They pulled away from the Boilermakers. And now that's a, that's a pretty good Iowa team. 21-0 midway second. We'll, we'll keep you posted on that because Penn State is still very much in the, the chase in the, in the Big Ten East. There's a possibility of a three-way tie. There's the All-State playoff rankings. Penn State's just out of there at, at number 12. Ohio State and Nebraska sitting at 6 and 10 respectively. But the Lions, they can take care of Iowa. Of course, you got Michigan State at the end. Penn State wants a head-to-head -head tie with Ohio State where they would win. But if it's a three-way tie, they're going to be left on the outside. And it would come down to Ohio State and Michigan head-to-head. -head. Well, we go down to to the fifth tie break, though, to knock mm -hmm. off one of those teams if it's a three-way. We'll explain more later. But Penn State taking care of business early in Happy Valley. And sure are. Buckeyes back out now needing 20. And they got to get all the way to the 11 to move the stains. <laughs> Barrett pressured again. Delivers wide open. Catch made by Dontre Wilson. It's a first and goal. Well, that is a heck of a job by the offensive line. Watch JT Barrett. You talk about quarterback movement in the pocket. Watch him right there. Just step up into the pocket and get the ball thrown over top of Nate Gary, the safety, who is back in coverage. Heck of a job of executing there on third and long. That guy's playing up-tempo. Barrett keeps it, but he is smacked immediately by Nate Gary, the captain, the senior four-year starting safety. And Gary is very active in run support that uh, previous play back there He's done such a good job of reading quarterbacks eyes has come up with four interceptions on the year He had the two picks last week against Wisconsin Sioux Falls, South Dakota all sports star in high school and sort of symbolic of the growth of this Nebraska defense Red zone has been an area of concern for Ohio State against Wisconsin Penn State and Northwestern in the last three games Samuel in the backfield Barrett rolls out and he's going to be dropped for a well should have been a loss he shows his muscle and escapes but still stuffed at the seven by Rose Ivy the, the Michael Jordan the left guard is pulling around here he actually is trying to draw this defender to try to dump the ball underneath so he's going to go horizontal to the line of scrimmage but watch this you don't have a chance to dump it right here so he just gives up on it and ends up trying to go to the outside. Rose Once. Ivy finding out how tough JT can be to tackle. Yeah, but Rose Ivy has he plays with such aggression and great speed. Does a good job of keeping the contain there on, on uh, JT Barrett. Third and goal. Empty backfield. Barrett as it takes. Buying time. Now flips it end zone. Caught touchdown. Terry McLaurin. Two huge third down conversions, including a third and 20. The touchdown coming on a third down play, and the Buckeyes stretch the lead. A 57 yard drive after Paris Campbell's kickoff return put him in good position. Ohio State have been a pretty slow starting offense, but now each of the last two games, Kirk, they've scored touchdowns on their first offensive possession. Look all the way out to the far left. You'll see McLaurin. Watch 83 work. Into the middle to the post. Now JT Barrett's in trouble. Now this is improvising. This is a drill you work on in practice. He eventually finds him. Great concentration by McLaurin to hold on to the football despite being hit. And good focus downfield by JT Barrett for the touchdown. Tomorrow we're on ESPN NFL Insiders at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, then 11 o'clock. Sunday NFL Countdown right up to kickoff. And then on Monday Night Football, the Bills. Tyra Taylor and company take on Russell Wilson and the Seahawks coverage at 6 Eastern with Monday Night Countdown and the game at 8.15 also on the Watch ESPN app. JT Barrett, a 5 of 6 start all on that drive, 49 yards and the touchdown pass to McLaurin. From McLaurin, just his second touchdown reception of the season. 
Urban boots it deep. And Trey Bryant, the true freshman, is going to bring it out from a yard inside the end zone and gets thumped at the 16. Another look at the touchdown. Chris, JT Barrett is so good at improvising. Here's the design play where you have the receiver going to the out, and then you have the receiver going to the post. McLaurin actually ends up making the play. But what you want to see is how difficult this can be at times. Look at the pocket. Nice job. Now he starts to improvise. Now McLaurin, who went to the post, sees that his quarterback is in trouble. So what he decides to do is go back this way, work back to that open space, and then have a chance to be able to give his quarterback a chance to make the throw. Great vision downfield. And JT Barrett does what JT Barrett does, improvises and makes plays. And now Armstrong and the Huskers will have to once again try to answer. Again, they feed Terrell Newby on first down. Hubbard slams him to the ground. To Samantha Ponder. Yeah, Chris, Nebraska offensive coaches really intense with their wide receivers after they didn't make it into the end zone on that last drive, saying, look, I know they're grabbing you every time. Don't let them grab you. But if the refs are going to let them, grab them back. This is a route runners game. They knew they were going to see a lot of man. They said, you've got to be decisive. Keep your eyes up. This is your chance to make a statement. Good stuff, Sam. Ohio State's coverage guys are pretty sticky, but apparently in Nebraska's view, they're, they're grabbing the jerseys, too. On second and eight, Armstrong takes a downfield shot. Westerkamp goes up and makes the grab at midfield over Damon Webb. Uh, Jordan Westerkamp in the slot. I thought we'd see more Gary and Conley there, but instead it's Damon Webb one-on-one. -on -one. Webb had trouble defending Austin Carr a week ago when they were matched up in the slot. That's why they considered moving Conley. But how about Westerkamp's adjustment to the ball? Again, a great route runner. Goes up, locates the ball, and high points it. And how about the body control as well while he's up in the air? Good throw by Armstrong as well. He was a terrific slot receiver. He had 65 catches a year ago. Production down this year because he's been nicked up. And now, Mikhail Wilbon, one of the four tailbacks we might see tonight. And Kirk, with that completion, Tommy Armstrong adds another record to his resume. The Nebraska career total offense record. He passes Taylor Marcinez, the quarterback that he succeeded. And also got the completion yards and touchdown career records. Yeah, and, and I think, you know, you see Taylor Martinez and Tommy Armstrong kind of in this era of football that we live in. And both these guys have had a chance to play a lot of football. And they both happen to run and throw. And that's why those numbers are so high. Newbie. Stacked up. He'll lose a yard on second down, so it sets up now a, a third and six. Another one of those third mediums that are so crucial in this game. Yards are really tough to come by in the interior for this Nebraska offense. Not getting much of a push at all, even with their double teams. And now, as you said, third and six. It's about the pass rush and about trying to give Tommy Armstrong a chance. And you got to think about two guys. Seaton Carter 11 and also the success we've seen tonight from Jordan Westcamp both off to the right. Armstrong has time again looking downfield a nice throw broken up at the last minute there. Marshawn Lattimore was defending. Try to get it to Stanley Morgan. Good play by the corner. Going back to Sam's report, make plays. Challenge these receivers. Stanley Morgan really close to coming up with a play, but how about the effort at the end by Lattimore to go up and get his hand in there to knock that ball away? Morgan very close to coming down with a big catch. So here's Caleb Lightborn, the true freshman punter. Some big shoes to fill. Many of you may know the story of Sam Foltz. We'll detail that later. But with the first Nebraska punt, you see some of the Ohio State students putting number 27 there. It was the number of Sam Folt. And Lightborn knocks it dead. Pre-game, there was this ceremony all throughout the country, especially in the Big Ten. The story of Foltz's death in a car accident in July has touched the specialists. And uh, we're happy to have you guys here. This, this, one, this is the half of the team in Ohio State. It's got 27 Buckeyes on it, so yeah, take that. 27 Buckeyes on the helmet. That's Gerald and Jill Fultz, Sam's parents, who made the trip for the first time on the team charter. They've been going to all the road games this year. But the show of support and emotion from the specials all over this conference has been wonderful to see. Similar to last week at Wisconsin. Every single week, and I had a chance to go down and, and meet uh, his parents. Very uh, special people. 
Fultz was a special player as well, oh, a guy yeah. who would have been voted captain on this team, a walk-on so that. symbolic of Nebraska's yeah. success over the years. Such a, a, a talented team to have a punter mm. as a captain tells you a lot about what he meant to these, uh, these, these uh, teammates of his. Direct snap for Samuel. Who cannot get the block on the edge he needs a quarterback out there trying to help him out JT couldn't quite take care of his man still a nice gain of first down yeah great a great gain considering this play is designed to go to the right he comes all the way back to the left and JT Barrett tries to come up it was a whiff but the effort was there you give him an A <laughs> oh, for no effort quarterback come on yeah, I, mean, uh, yo, I mean all the blocks they got, throw for him on his running plays no, from, he, he tried but he missed he tried. swing and a miss incomplete on the attempted block here <laughs> Yeah, it's a good try. <laughs> He's going to get crushed in the film oh, you're room. Too, you're too generous, dude. <laughs> it's a swing and a miss. End of the first quarter. He just closed his eyes. Guys on the march here already up 14 3, an early pick six, and then a touchdown drive. And try to build on that lead when the second quarter begins. Back after this word for your local ABC station. Beginning of the second quarter. Welcome back to ESPN Saturday Night Football on ABC. Presented by Walmart. Ohio State, their second offensive possession, jumped to an early lead. It was a pick six. Armstrong picked off by Damon Webb off the deflection by Raquan McMillan. Huskers made a long drive down inside the five, but settled for three. Ohio State answered with a touchdown drive and now trying to add to the lead. Chris Fowler, Kirk Kirkstreet, and Samantha Ponder in a beautiful fall evening here in Columbus. Ohio State running just 12 plays in the opening quarter. That's all it took to get 14 points. Curtis Samuel already has four touches. Mike Weber only one carry here as we start this second quarter. And that's Weber in the pistol. No motion out now. Husker show pressure off the edge. They pick it up and Barrett tries a downfield shot. It was Samuel in the seam. But Gary was tracking him. He didn't have his head turned. Kirk. Yeah, a miscommunication between Curtis Samuel. He was trying to. He was actually going downfield. And I think JT Barrett saw something in the coverage, pulled the ball out, and tried to split the difference between the safety and the corner. It had to really been a tight fit. That's why he put so much on that. But Samuel never even had his head turned. Well, this Nebraska defense has been so much better this year. Second year of Mark Banker, the defensive coordinator. Last year, it seems like they gave up so many big plays, 290 yards a game through the air. This year, boy, much more discipline on the back end. On second and 10. Samuel makes a catch, but they do tackle him short of the marker. They give up a ton of huge plays last year. Only had 10 interceptions, so already 15 this season. Yeah, they were, they were one of the worst in the country, giving up pass plays of over 20 yards. They were 125th in the country. This year, totally different story as they have buttoned things up. And I think the corner play, with how tight they're able to play, so much confidence that Jones and, and Kalu have, and then the way Nate Gary and Williams have played, too. Weber tries to muscle, and he does get the first down. Rose Ivy has had a tough time tackling Buckeye ball carriers today. He had him behind the line, couldn't hold him. Yeah, he sure did, and he's 230 pounds going up against Mike Weber. He hits him about a yard and a half short. Right there, he's done. He's got him. Ohio State's going to have to punt. You see Davis coming over, but gives you an idea of the leg drive and the strength from the freshman from Detroit, Mike Weber, trying to fill the big shoes of Zeke Elliott. If he gives up on that play, Ohio State is, is well short. Rose Ivy, the senior out of Kansas City, is being looked at by the athletic trainers. He kind of came in a little bit dinged up coming into this game. Like so many of these Nebraska players, that was a big stop, though, Kurt. They they could force a punt, get the ball back. As it is, Ohio State's marching now near midfield. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, committed to honoring blimpworthy athletes who demonstrate hard work on and off the field. Goodyear, official sponsor of the college football playoff. Ohio State, although the coach doesn't want to acknowledge it, very much in playoff contention of the loss by Texas A&M, which was ranked number four today, certainly helps the cause of Ohio State and Louisville, among others. Here's Weber. 
Barrel straight up the middle again breaks tackles and shows his force getting into Nebraska territory. Yeah, he is a, a really known for his physicality. Did a good job dropping some weight coming into this year to try to get quicker. Ohio State has been so spoiled in that position with Carlos Hyde and Zeke Elliott over the last three years. Mike Weber has that kind of talent to be able to fill fit in with those kind of names. Just a young freshman. This is Wilson on the edge. Cannot escape. It's down inside the 45. Kyron Williams, the safety, grabbed him, but it's a first down again. Now, Dontre Wilson is, is kind of in the mold of Curtis Samuel, guy you want to try to get the ball out in space because he's he can make people miss, has great quickness. I say still trying to kind of find that vertical threat. Who can help stretch a defense? down the field and when you hit those kind of plays it opens up other aspects of the offense whether it's the running game or the short passes play action JT looks downfield does take a shot Samuels down there deflected and incomplete here comes a flag Chris Jones was in coverage so Kirk they they give it to their their playmaker they try to get it to him but they draw the penalty yeah and because the ball is under thrown Samuel actually has to wait on the ball and that's why Jones interfered with him there he is ISO one-on-one -on -one with with Chris Jones who's a great cover guy see how the ball brought him actually back to Jones and Jones because he didn't see where the ball is he runs into him and that's why there's a pass interference it's really hard to play in the corner on that yeah. one. It just he, he he was hurt by a poor throw. He's also got to look up, try to find the football. But if JT Barrett puts that ball more to the right, that's a touchdown. Because Samuel was pulling away from Jones. Ball moves inside the 30. They fake it to Weber. And Barrett pump fake still got the ball. Now takes off and bangs down for about a four-yard gain. JT Barrett on the carry. Not many design runs so far for JT. Interesting to see how they formulate the game plan. You know, Urban Meyer working with Ed Warner and, and Tim Beckett. We've seen a lot of variety, a lot of different looks, different identities week to week, haven't we? Yeah, yeah and I think they're still searching for it. Remember, this is an offense after the first four weeks. Think about how quickly they were scoring. Their trip to Norman when they took on the Oklahoma Sooners, they, they were making big plays, and they've been kind of searching in these last three or four weeks. Weber on the zone read, cuts free. Weber headed for the end zone. Touchdown, Ohio State. Well, this is what they're looking for when Ohio State has the running game going. Watch Pat Elfline lead the way, and they do a good job with the formation into the boundary. There's nobody left to the outside. They put all the defenders into the, into the boundary with the receivers and the tight end. It left only the corner and the safety there, and with Ohio State pulling around a couple linemen, he kind of had a convoy there. So credit the, the look from Ohio State with creating that touchdown. Seventh rushing touchdown for Mike Weber. He's on track for a thousand yard season as a redshirt freshman. He was just too physical for the Nebraska tacklers throughout this drive. They had a chance to wrap him up, could have forced a punt, didn't get him there, and they pay the price as he takes it to the house. Buckeyes rolling 21 3. It was a game with high impact in the playoff over on ESPN tonight. Washington visits the Bears in Berkeley 10:30 on ESPN. The Huskies in position to move up to number four in the playoff committee rankings with AM falling to Mississippi State today. Jake Browning on the road against the Bears who are 4-4. For, for, for the real gamers out there, stay up. Stay up for that. Watch Washington if you haven't seen him because that's gonna, that could potentially be a challenge. Cal can score points with Davis Webb, especially at home. They've beaten some decent teams at home, so that, I don't think that'll be an easy one for Washington. Husky's well, got SC coming in. Then the Apple Cup could be enormous. Cougars undefeated in the conference. That's in Pullman. Here's Trey Bryant just trying to tightrope on the sidelines as he takes the kickoff. Buckeyes always kick it to the left, cover it well. A flag comes in very late from a long way away. Figures to be on the returning team here. During the return, illegal block in the back. Number 33 on the return team. The distance from the end of the run, first down. 
You know, Brian was really close when he fielded that kick. Let's let's check the progressive pylon cam, see if he tiptoed into the paint. Ooh. Ooh. Close. Thomas really Kissinger close. is the replay official. Here's another look at the yeah, touchdown. Let's go back and look at the formation. They put two receivers into the boundary. Look what it does to the defense. Look at all the defenders over here. So you're going to get a block here. The center's going to come around to pick up the corner, and there's nobody left. So the formation into the boundary gets the Nebraska defense out of position. Pick up a block by the receiver, Paris Campbell. The center pulling around. Nobody left. Well designed there by Urban Meyer and Ed Warner. You think they fooled the Huskers defense with a new look did. there? Huh? Yeah, absolutely. Awful field position for Armstrong. Hitting the backfield is Divine Ozigbo. Quick penetration there by Chris Worley and Michael Hill. And then we talked about that right side of that offensive line. Cole Conrad, watch them here on this right side. Watch how quickly Ohio State gets around him. There's Hill in there. There's Worley. You also see Devon Hamilton, Ohio State, coming after Nebraska right now with them back inside their own five-yard line with that defensive line and the athletic ability that they have. Hill, the 300-pounder. It's, it's tough to stop Ozigbo, who goes 230, dead in his tracks like that. Tommy Armstrong's experience, 40-second start. they got to be smart in this area. Armstrong loops it downfield for Morgan, a jump ball. Marshawn Lattimore in close coverage there. Third down. A low-risk throw. Tommy Armstrong's probably his best throw that he makes is that vertical throw. He, he When you watch him all year, I think he is most comfortable when he gets back, one hitch, put the ball up in the air, and let his talented receivers go make a play on it. That time, Morgan almost went up and made a play over the corner. Remember, they're isolated one-on-one -on -one there. That time, it was Lattimore in coverage. Kirk, they've already taken four shots from beyond 15 yards tonight. They're one for four, but they'll keep, 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 keep taking it. Push you down 18. Yep. Third and 12. Buckeyes rush four. They get it out quick. It's incomplete. That was uh, Seathan Carter, the tight end, backpedaling was short of the marker anyway, and they'll have to punt out of their end zone. One of the things about accuracy is your feet. Your feet. And this is something Tommy Armstrong's worked so hard on. Watch him fall off this throw. As he throws, he falls back on it. It's a problem with his accuracy, and the ball is affected by it. Lightborn, the freshman that had two punts blocked this year, and is right up against the end line. They're a terrible team in net punting. This has been a trouble spot. Buckeyes don't get near him one step and boots it, but it's not good. Yeah, it just spins and goes backwards, and Ohio State will have awesome field position trying to build on this 18-point lead. They'll take over at the 31-yard line. Remember when you and I called the Penn State game over in State College with Ohio State a few weeks ago, and I said that Urban Meyer throughout his career as a head coach does such a good job of feeling the vibe of a game, the momentum of a game. And I think his, now he might know that, but when you have one of the youngest teams in the country, they're learning week by week. And I think right now, up 21 to three, 11 minutes to go here in the second quarter. It's a big opportunity for Urban Meyer and for the Ohio State offense. What they've called is pretty much work. Buckeyes haven't run many plays, but they're averaging about seven and a half yards per play so far. Three in the backfield. Samuel shows his quickness, but there wasn't much room there. If Nebraska is going to kind of stay in contact, and this is by far their biggest deficit of the season. They trailed Oregon at home by 13 in the second quarter, came back to win that one by a dozen. A whole different animal here tonight on the road. Yeah, this defense is being challenged with this field position, but they've got to bow up here and, and try to make a play. Man with a mustache there, Ross Dezuris, the defensive end. <laughs> Raleigh Finger style. Barrett. On play action, loops it down the middle over the head of Campbell, who had a step. Well, because of the balance that Ohio State's been running, again, you see you have to worry about the quick throw, you have to worry about the run game, and Ohio State's taken a few more shots downfield, so it's keeping Nebraska's safeties at bay. Their, little, their eyes are being impacted that time. You can see Williams, 26, he bought up on the play action fake, and it opened up a clear path for Paris Campbell behind him, and that time JT, JT Barrett just puts too much on the throw. But a lot more freedom and a lot more aggression in the play different calling with field. the lead tonight, isn't yeah, it, for it's Ohio just State? It's a different field tonight. 
Barrett again from the pocket delivers. Samuel juggled it, makes the catch, and is knocked down. Should be a first down to the 21 yard line. Bobbled it, didn't get it clean. How about the circus catch and then the stop and then the jump for the first down? What? Watch him, watch him make this catch, the juggle. Ball goes in the air and he stops and then leap right there. He extends himself for the first down. The That's ball great. bounced off that, that, that special helmet, that, that slate gray thing with no Buckeye leaves on it. Do you, you approve of the look tonight? Yeah, yeah, it looks good. Yeah, I think so. Take it to Weber. Barrett now looks back to the left and has the running back wide open for a touchdown, but he overshot him. It's the third time we've seen Ohio State have a receiver, in this case a running back, open behind coverage, and JT Barrett just unable to throw the ball with accuracy. He's going to sneak out right here. He's just going to come down. Kind of gets lost. The linebackers do not do a good job of keeping their eye on him. See late, there's a, an effort there by Young, but he's wide open. I think JT Barrett just hurried the throw. He so desperately wants to make these throws that I think it's affecting his his rhythm. That's a good point. His accuracy. Yeah. But he missed that by a lot. Yeah. Maybe they go back to that later. They hand it to Weber, who bangs down inside the 20. That's one though you save for the right time. And you think, okay, they're giving us this look. This might be a new wrinkle. We haven't shown it. We've been running it a lot in practice, but not not running it in games. Let's save it when we get to a certain spot on the field. And you call it thinking you're going to hit a home run, and they did. They just weren't able to execute. And it could be big if they can force a field goal attempt. Very you're big. trying to stay within contact. But but you're right. That was an example of aggressive play calling. Maybe going for the first half knockout. Exactly right. Not executed. Barrett on third down hit as he throws underneath the completion to Campbell a flag is that now another one in coverage Weber was in the pattern there he got locked up with the DB McLaurin got tackled running his route he was, he was man to man coverage with Chris Jones holding defense number eight ten yards from the previous spot First down. And that'll give Ohio State another first down. They're, they're four for four converting. The Nebraska's had some chances to get off the field. Another one there, but the penalty, and that, that says it all for Mike Riley. And they, they had him short of the first down, knowing Urban Meyer and, the, and where we are. He probably ends up going for it, but off to the left here, right here. Just locks him up there. Easy call. Two different officials made it. Just outside the 10 yard line, first down. Ohio State trying to really put Nebraska on the ropes. Hornerskers have kind of a methodical offensive style. To go down here 28 3 would be really tough. Weber hit right at the line of scrimmage. Nice job there in the middle. Peter Young's playing hurt tonight. He sure is. That's a misread, actually, by JT Barrett. Reading the defensive end on the zone read. The time he should have pulled it out as the end claps down. But Dedrick Young, boy, when you bring his name up, Mark Banker, doesn't he get excited about Young? He, he wants to talk about what, what, uh, what a bright future that, that Young has. Just a true sophomore. Barrett rolling out and just chucks it away. Yeah, Young, you saw it playing with that that brace in his elbow, hurt himself late in the Wisconsin game. You just go down the line offensively and defensively. There's so many guys. The wear and tear of the season really showing itself in Nebraska's roster. Yeah. Sometimes you have those years and you, you ask your players to try to fight through it. And in Young's case, trying to play through that tonight. Some years you're lucky. You, you know, you stay healthy. JT Bear just throws it away, way up into the crowd. Pan's gonna make a catch. Oh my oh, goodness! My, you got it. You got to secure that. Oh, there's so much shame there. Distraught. Let me now show him on national television. <laughs> Another third down. They need ten here. There, it's been very sharp. They just get the playoff. Looks for the end zone. Battle for it. 
and it's caught. Touchdown. Oh, now they say out of bounds. It was Benjamin Victor, one of the talented true freshmen. They said this guy's ready to emerge. He's improved in the practice field. But he and Josh Kalu are one on one. The true freshman. Coaches feel that he has the body of an A.J. Green because he choked. Wow. We'll have to take a look at that. I thought it was a touchdown live, and I'm sure yeah. they'll review it. Ball goes up in the air, His but then right, right there with the right foot is still down. Uh, the ruling on the field was an incomplete pass. That ruling is under further review. Dave Katai is our rules expert here in the booth. The pylon cam will show it to you. Dave, what do you think? Control? Well, he's got that he's got that back foot down. And the question is, does he have control while having that back foot down? Remember, it doesn't take an attorney just a second. Let's see what we have here. Got a foot down. All right, he's still moving, still moving. I think they're going to stand on this personally. Progressive pylon cam gives you a great look. I, I would agree that maybe control was achieved just after his foot came off the ground. Yeah, look, there it is. Ball's in the air. Okay, the, he doesn't he, have, you keep going. He doesn't quite have to see how the ball still goes still up. Moving. Does, does it? Yeah, the ball, it, yeah, yeah, I'm with you, Dave. It's going to stand. Yep. That was a really good look at it, that, that last look. Very much so. Yeah, the you could see the ball shot. didn't quite, he didn't quite, and by the way, as a true freshman, it's a big opportunity here to try to have his first touchdown, but we'll see what they uh, what they see upstairs. Like I said, he he's out of Fort Lauderdale, 6'4", 185 pounds. One more look here. The only one catch on the season, and you're right, a chance in a, in a big game to, to collect a touchdown and, and announce his arrival because he's come in here with some high expectations and just hasn't been able to blossom yet. But but this week they said, look out, he's going to make an impact. Well, with Ohio State's offense sputtering the last three weeks, especially with the vertical pass game, Balls. they're looking down to find out who could help out. And they saw Benjamin Victor at 6'4", 185, as a guy that they could try to get the ball thrown to. But they said, hey, playing receiver is more than just running routes. You got to block, you got to know all the assignments, you got to be able to read coverage. It's like any freshman. He's just learning at Ohio in State. His first year. Yeah. What did they say? No block, no rock. After right? further review, the ruling on the field of incomplete pass stands. In other words, if you don't sell out in the run game and block like Noah Brown and these receivers right. do, don't expect to see the ball. Yeah. Yeah. He'll have plenty more opportunities throughout his career, but obviously frustrated not getting his first one. So Tyler Durbin. And be out and fourth down play to try a field goal. Big He's stop. Only... By, the, by the way, for Nebraska, you brought up that if they if they hold yeah. him to a field goal, now it's the, it would have been uh, devastating. To give up a touchdown there, no doubt. Durbin only miss of the season was that block return for a touchdown at Penn State the one game for the Lions so he sends the 28 yarder through midway second quarter the lead is up to 21. Saturday night football presented by Walmart brought to you by Dr. Pepper. It's a college football tradition Pacific life helping generations of families achieve long term financial security for over 145 years and Buick proud partner of the NCAA. Not everybody is obsessed with American football. They're playing world football over there next to Ohio Stadium kicking the soccer ball around. No, not many in the tennis courts on a, on a chilly night, though, Kirk. No, no. Just one court full. And next to this big, beautiful stadium built for 1.3 million way back in the, about 95 years ago. <laughs> and then, of course, it's a great renovation they've yeah, done here, too. Big time. 2005 or six, they kind of ended the horseshoe era, filled it in, lowered the field. Huskers in the deep hole now. Down three touchdowns. Trey Bryant. True freshman is deep. They're in need of some kind of a spark. They need really an explosive play from somebody to chip away at this lead. Short kickoff, and Bryant's going to have a chance at the nine. Bounces off. He's chased and is going to be tackled by Durbin, the kicker there at the 23 yard line, being an athlete. 
Speaking of athletes, Kirk, we got the Bear, Chris Felica, and their athletic trivia question for this evening. No that, three technique. What, what do you have, Bear? Long Island. Center. Center with the, with the Cavs. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. As you know, the Cubs had to rally this week to uh, win their World Series for the first time in 108 years. The Brass is going to have to rally tonight to strap a, step a streak of their own. When was the last time the Huskers won a road game against a top 10 opponent? And who did they beat? I know oh, this one. Bear. You know this? I do. It was raining in Miami this week, so I stayed indoors and looked up stuff like this. Are you waiting it's for a Bear to ask you this? I'll, I'll, you, I'll give you a minute. I do know that one. I remember the game very well. well that means it was Colorado. No. Pearson L on the end around <laughs> doesn't get anything. All right, Mr. Felica, illuminate my friend because it was way back in the Tom Osborne era. I will answer that athletic trivia question for you. It was 1997, that game at Washington when Tom Osborne's Huskers I remember that game, game against the Huskies went on to win, didn't share the national title that year. Was that the game where one of the Washington, Washington quarterback went up and spiked the ball? Remember there was a quarterback that went up into the air after he scored, he spiked the ball and there was a penalty. I think Dave Kataya made that call in that game too. That was Jake. Fired incomplete on the far side, trying to get it to Stanley Morgan as Armstrong you know, desperately needs to get a drive going. Denzel Ward in coverage. Dave, Dave Katai was, was not responsible for that call. That was Jake Locker. That oh, okay. Player. I beg to differ with you. <laughs> Thank you. But you made all the good calls, right? Whatever. The point is Callahan, you know, Solich, Polini. This is the first top 10 road game attempt for Mike Riley. They have not won one since that championship season for Osborne in a situation like this. And they need 11 yards just to keep this drive alive. Press man across the board from Ohio State. From the pocket, Armstrong looking for his roommate, Westerkamp, just too tight of coverage. Gary and Conley breaks it up. Here comes another punt. Remember when they were throwing the ball? They had Damon Webb locked on him in the slot. Now on third down, you know they're going to try to probably get the ball to the slot to Westerkamp. Gary and Conley stride for stride. And as we've talked about, the yep. scouting report shows Nebraska when in doubt, they're going to throw it downfield. Because again, that's that's the best ball that Armstrong throws. And so far, he is four of 15 on the night. Lightborn, who shanked it earlier, kicks a low one. And Wilson muffs it, and it's recovered by Nebraska. He has had problems returning punts all year. It's an adventure. I talked to Urban Meyer about it yesterday. He said he just holds his breath when number two is back there. So why is he back there? I, I, I ask him that. They don't have a lot of breath. guys who can catch. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, it's been a it's been a challenge for him all year long to try to secure the ball. I think this time he just starts to to peak to try to look to where he might want to run with the ball. But I just because of some of the issues and challenges he's had all year long, it's not as if it's worth taking the risk because he's going to have that big return. Uh, he hasn't had a lot of big returns this year. It's about really more about securing the ball. And, that time he looked up field and took his eyes off the ball. Luke McNett, the fullback, made the recovery and now a much needed spark for this Nebraska offense. And Mikhail Wilbon takes off for a, about an eight yard first down yeah, game. And Wilbon was one of the first positive carries that he's fired up here, getting eight yards there on first down. In between the tackles, boy, if Nebraska can get that going, you're going to start to see Tommy Armstrong be able to run the football himself off of some play action looks and then he can run around the edge and also throw the ball as I said on the play action. And now they pitch it on the edge here. And Zigbo goes nowhere. Chris Worley showing his speed as a linebacker. Yeah, it's hard to get wide with any back let alone your power back. And surprise they try to catch Ohio State out of position but you can see there's five or six scarlet jerseys chasing down the more powerful a Zigbo. Again, he, he's more of a thumper between the tackle short yardage guy, not a guy that's going to try to get to the perimeter and outrun the Ohio State defense. They lose big yards there. Perhaps two plays to get the seven yards here, down by 21. Armstrong takes a look, takes off, and gets around the edge, gets the first down. 25 yard line. So one of the scrambles and Armstrong's down after getting knocked down by Hooker. Oh boy. Wow, he is not moving there. Must have been when his when he got hit didn't have a chance because of the way he was holding the ball to brace himself. 
And Lee Cooker took the feet out from under him. Here's the tackle. Guys, see how the ball's in his right hand. He doesn't get a chance really to get his head, protect his head there. Looks like his head may have hit the ground. He definitely did. See, see the ball in the right hand? Just doesn't have a chance to brace himself. Boy. Just an awful scene. He is still laying motionless. And prayers now for Tommy Armstrong. We'll step aside as the trainers and the doctors take a look at him. Concern for the Nebraska quarterback, Tommy Armstrong. They rolled him over from his stomach to his back. They've cut off his jersey and used scissors to also cut off his shoulder pads kind of up at the, the breastplate. Sam Ponder is on the sidelines. Sam, Sam, what can you see from your vantage point? Yeah, he's kept his eyes closed most of this time. We saw him move his left hand very slightly, but his hands have mostly been clinched. As you said, they did cut off uh, part of his jersey, just trying to be able to take some of this off safely. They cut off his chin strap. Um, extreme concern from the people around him. JT Barrett came over here, number of different coaches and players to play uh, pray around him. Obviously a very scary situation. They do have the board out here to take him over, but right now just being so gentle, um, trying not to do anything that would disrupt anything further. I did talk to some people who saw it who were right here um, where it happened and they believe he came down on the ball um, there, there was concern obviously that he had his head but from eyewitnesses who were right here they said they think he came down on the ball so obviously a lot of unknown but right now a lot of thoughts and prayers out for Tommy you see they put a brace in his neck they've got the board the cart is right there this is on the Ohio State sideline and the Buckeyes have been gathered looking with concern and support just a few yards away Talked about Armstrong has been a constant presence with this program the last four years. Starter from his redshirt freshman year. We're told that his father has been escorted to the field by the police, kneeling down there in the black jacket on the left side. His girlfriend is, is over there. You see her in the blonde hair crying, being comforted by a teammate. Trey Foster. It's a rough game, and this is one of your worst nightmares. No doubt about it. Being very careful to strap him on that board before they lift him on the cart. Actually, see both the staffs working mm -hmm. diligently together to try to make sure they're doing everything. You know, you, as trainers and doctors, medical staff, you, you practice these things just in case something horrific happens, hoping that it never does, but then it happens. And all that work that you put in, you got to come together as, and, and do everything, taking every precaution. When it happens, it doesn't matter whether you're an Ohio State or oh, Nebraska no. doctor or trainer. No. Everybody trying to to pitch in. Here's Jalen Oderman. Then is Tommy's fiance on the left side. His father right there in the Nebraska cap. Armstrong comes from the San Antonio area. We've talked about his toughness and his durability throughout his career. Mike Riley oh, yeah. offering comfort. Fiance there. Probably one of the more competitive guys that I've seen uh, over the last few years and a leader for this team. Armstrong will be taken. 
to an area hospital and we'll pass along information as we get it. And while the obvious concern is for him, Armstrong's departure leaves quite a void for this football team in leadership. It's nice that he's speaking and is aware now of his surroundings and his teammates. His father right there with him. The morning personnel receiver number 15. See him holding his hand. Nice show of support from the Ohio State fans. Clapping and chanting St. Tommy. Tommy. Yeah. He's just giving his thumbs up to the crowd. It's a relief to see that, isn't it? There's in a neck brace. These players looking at this card as it pulls their, their guy away, their leader away. Josh Kalu coming over. The ambulance has been brought out on the playing surface. And that Area just beyond the end zone. The run created a first down, and we'll fill you in on Armstrong's replacement as his dad gives a thumbs up as well. Fans on both sides chanting Tommy. Yeah. <laughs> Chris, I don't know if they'll take him to the Ohio State. Medical Center or to the Riverside Hospital, but great hospitals and, and care that he'll receive here in, in the area. Remember when the Penn State defensive back had a, a neck injury here and received such great care for, a, for maybe up to a week until he was able to, to fly home. Remember Adam Telefero yeah, had an injury exactly. here. with his father who will not come to his son in the back of that ambulance apparently he's, he's already, being given a ride in the front yeah, yeah. yeah. Trying to fill the void, Kirk, as we resume football. And Nebraska will have a first down at the 24 yard line. This is a senior, Riker Fife, who really has almost no experience. Just two for five this year. He's played in three games, hasn't played or thrown a pass since mid September against Oregon. Yeah, just two of five on the year, ha has played uh, throughout his career. Being a senior, he's played some football. But this, is, this has been Tommy Armstrong's position and and he's their guy as we said their leader so Riker's been more in support from the sideline and uh, trying to offer support to Tommy when he comes off the field throughout this season and now he'll he'll get the call not easy to execute as a quarterback or a team when you've just watched this scene here. Really, for both teams, obviously for Nebraska, they're, they're concerned. But I, I think people watching at home, people in this stadium, everybody right now, their their thoughts are with Tommy Armstrong. 
So first down for five who did start one game last year when Armstrong was out with a foot injury. And they hand it off in the backfield and that's Wilbon knocked for a loss. Sam Hubbard got there. Sam Hubbard Chris has really stepped in this year and tried to be the kind of the, the dominant player up front with Joey Bosa moving on to the pros. And Fife drops back deeply and delivers a completion there to Seathan Carter, the tight end, just short of a first down at the 16. Boy, that's time. Short. Yeah, they, they, they kept Carter in to block. And then he just kind of snuck out at the end of that play, almost like a slip screen. Watch him off to the left here. He's almost in pass protection. They lose him in coverage. And they give Fife, Fife, uh, Fife a lot of credit for being able to locate him in the offensive line for giving him time to be able to throw that football. That play took a while. Huskers need two. Hand it off inside. And muscling down is a Zigbo. He's going to be just a bit short. So Riley has a decision. Maybe it's a pretty easy one down well, 21. Yeah, he, yeah, he's going to have to to go for that right now with the score at 24 to three. Remember, late in the first half, Ohio State deferred, so they get the ball to start the second half. And Mike Riley understands this is a big opportunity for his team and his offense. You do lose the quarterback run threat with Tommy Armstrong no longer in there. High snap and a whistle now. A timeout was taken by Ohio State. State. Snap. Charge timeout, Ohio State. So with the Huskers facing a fourth and one, trying to cut into this 21 point lead, we'll take a timeout. 347 before halftime. Tommy Armstrong in that ambulance pulling up to Ohio State's Medical Center. Keith Mann, the Sports Information Director for Nebraska, informing us that Armstrong was briefly unconscious, but the good news is that he's been able to move all of his extremities. Certainly encouraging as he was taken off in the neck brace. We'll pass along any additional information that we have. Meanwhile, Riker Fife, the senior, has played sparingly in his career, did come in a couple of years ago and spelled Armstrong when he was knocked out of some games got to find a way to get a yard here to keep Nebraska in this thing after the timeout they go I formation and they adjust out of it and Fife rolling out backpedaling just has to dump it down the pressure was immediate there by Tyquan Lewis and the Buckeyes defense holds on fourth down and Tyquan Lewis does a great job of fighting off the block. He's right here. He's going to do a good job of keeping contained. And without Armstrong, Fife just doesn't quite have that same ability to get wide. So a little bit surprised by the call, to be honest. I thought they might try to power just right up the middle with the power back of Zigbo. But instead, they try to catch Ohio State napping. A little bit of a play fake, roll him out. And he just didn't have much of a chance because of how quickly Taekwon Lewis got in there. You'd call that a tough walking assignment. A Zigbo trying to block Taekwon Lewis did, did not do much of a job with it. No. So 342 before halftime for the Buckeyes to add to the lead if they can. As you said, they'll get it to start the third quarter. Weber is knocked down at the line of scrimmage. You know, coming into to this drive, Ohio State's average starting field position has been the, their own 43-yard line. I mean, it's been such a, you know, the last three or four weeks, they've managed the exactly. game as a play caller. Tonight, they've been more aggressive, more attacking. I think it has everything to do with where the ball has been when they've started some of these drives. There it rolls out, delivers over the head of Samuel. Yeah, you're right. The last few weeks, awful field position by and large. Tonight, whether it's Campbell's kick return, a shanked punt, yeah. they've had much yeah. better field position. And I think Ed Warner and Urban Meyer, I, I, when you're a play caller, even though you want your stats to be impressive and everybody to look how many points you're scoring and how many yards you're throwing for and running for, at the end of the day, you're trying to win the game, trying to manage the game. You've got a great defense, solid in special teams, and 
That's that's how they've kind of been very conservative at times and very predictable with some of their play calling in the last few weeks. Buckeyes need nine. And Barrett takes off. There's a huge crease, and JT is going to get a first down, still running out across the 35 yard line. It's always a reliable play in third down. Does Zaris take himself out of the play completely? The defensive end picks up a nice block at the beginning of that play. Left guard there, the freshman, Michael Jordan. Nebraska sees this kind of scheme a lot in practice from their own offense. They were not ready for at that time, a 20 yard gain. And now Barrett, pump fakes, wanted to take a downfield shot. Nobody open, and just throws it away. I think because of that big run, Ohio State, all of a sudden, their mode and their mentality changes. You know, you get a big run instead of being pinned back deep in your own territory. Now, all of a sudden, you're out to the 36 yard line. 240 you get the ball to start the second half urban Meyer now is thinking about points whether it's a field goal or a touchdown still a couple timeouts left he knows how stale the offense got here last week there were five consecutive punts they had a fast start against Northwestern and a great finish but in the middle some empty possessions Samuel across the 40 it will be third down and five Tyron Williams tackled him. And a nice block here by Terry McLaurin, 83 off to the left right there. Kind of sets the edge there, but the rest of that Nebraska defense does a very good job. You can see Josh Benderis, see the block up at the top, trying to set the edge. Watch Benderis try to be able to try to chase that down. But Nebraska, despite that nice block there, crack block, they still do a good job of being able to keep him to a short gain. Empty backfield. A lot of times this dictates a quarterback run for Bear, but this time he rolls and throws to Samuel, who makes a nice catch backpedaling, tried to hold the ball out, and it is a first down. Very agile move by the H-back. Well, he's their most explosive playmaker and, and a guy that I think JT Barrett feels very good about. And you can see he's looking down. Where's the sideline? He knew it was somewhere. Got his foot down and picked up the first down and stopped the clock. Good awareness. So Samuels run it five times, caught it four times, 72 yards from scrimmage tonight. It's a good first half. There it pulls it. Now fires across the middle. And the catch is made by Samuel again, and he's inside the Nebraska 40. Watch the play fake going here. Watch what it does to the linebacker. Play fake right here. Linebacker moves. Throw right back. Nice throwing lane there. Minute 30 and counting in the first half. Barrett again on play action. Takes it, checks it down to A.J. Alexander, one of the backup tight ends. Bandera stopped him just short of the marker. And J.T. Barrett doing a good job preserving the timeouts. Still has the two timeouts and already in field goal range. From the pocket. Campbell knocked down. He just got tangled up in coverage there with Kalu. No flag. And their feet got caught up there. Good no call. Clock third, goes. Third and one, they take a shot in the end zone, Kurt. Yep, yep. It's a good time to do that. It's kind of an Urban Meyer staple over the years. Most coaches, especially with the, ter the ball uh, the position in the ball territory right now, that's definitely a chance you want to take. Campbell went over there, had the, the hamstring stretched on the sideline after that play. It's a blitz off to the left. Barrett trying to follow Weber is dragged down, but it's going to be a first down. Aaron Williams couldn't collect him before the first down. So now inside of a minute to go, Iowa State still with those two timeouts. Capital One halftime report. Stan, Mark, and Mac coming up. They'll update you on what's going on. A, a pitcher's duel. Nil-nil in Baton Rouge between the Tide and the Tigers, by the way. Into the third quarter. Barrett. Pump fake, pump fakes again. Still got it, still got it, and now just throws it away. Down to 41 seconds. And eventually got knocked down. Let, let, let's look at the routes here for Ohio State. You have a receiver coming here, you get a receiver coming here, backs out of the backfield. Look what JT Barrett's looking into. I mean, look, look, look at the coverage. And you've wondered why these last few weeks there have been times where he's pumping and kind of hitching and hitching and hitching. It's because a lot of times the receivers are just not getting separation. He's looking at a lot of a lot of coverage. 
And escapes again, eyes downfield. Samuels got it inside the 15. It's another first down. 32 seconds to go. Let's see if they spend a timeout here. And another good job of improvising by JT Barrett. Seems like when they've been most effective tonight throwing the ball, it's when he's buying time and creating. And Urban Meyer is going to use that second timeout. The clock would have restarted pretty quickly after they've moved the stick. So Urban says, let's just take a deep breath. Let's ponder this play call. And you punch it in here. You get it to 31 3, get the ball to start the second half. And this is what Ohio State fans have waited for all season. This is their first real marquee home game and primetime showcase game. The Buckeyes are kind of busting out tonight. Absolutely. Absolutely. Go back to this last play. Nebraska actually brought pressure. It's going to force JT Barrett to step up. But watch in the background what Curtis Samuel does. Watch Curtis Samuel realize he's back here. Watch how he works to stay open. He sees his quarterbacks improvising. Instead of taking off, he's just looking around, trying to nestle into that soft spot in the zone. It's exactly what he was able to do there. JT Barrett, again, finds him. When he takes off to scramble, he's, he's looking up number four. Barrett, 12 of 22 tonight, 114 yards and a touchdown. Also run for 29 yards. Good year, providing aerial coverage, watching over the hard work and determination and blimp-worthy athletes for more than 60 years. Good year, official sponsor of the college football playoff. And we're down in this area, Noah Brown, who's had a quiet night, becomes a factor. And they fire it short, and that right on cue, Mr. Herbstreit is Noah Brown, his first catch to the four. They got to spend the time out if they want to stop the clock. It's ticking now, 20 and counting. He's going to try to get a playoff here. He wants to go. Kind of save that timeout. And second and two, high snap. Weber dances free and now lunges down near the goal line. He stopped with seven seconds. It is a first down, but Urban takes the safe road and, and calls the timeout right here. They don't have any more, so if they're tackled in bounds, that's going to be it. Of course, doesn't feel like a huge gamble when you're up three touchdowns. Nebraska will have to use its backup quarterback, and you're going to get the ball to start the second half. Circling back to the point I was making, Kirk, you know, th this has been a season where there were a lot of new faces in Ohio State, but they went down to Norman and blasted the Sooners. And all of a sudden, you thought, well, maybe Ohio State's ready for the playoff again this year. Then they've, they've struggled to get back to that since then. And tonight maybe is the night. Well, they, they've looked a little bit more like themselves. But I, I think that because of where they've been with the, with the football, it's allowed them to be more aggressive. Uh, and their defense has played lights out tonight. So they've, they've done a very nice job on both sides of the ball. What they do here ultimately could be a big factor in the vibe and the feel as they get ready for the second half. Because, again, they start the second half with the football. But Urban Meyer, without a timeout, he's going to try to take a shot into the end zone. He's got Noah Brown isolated at the bottom one-on-one. -on -one. Look at the bunch up there. Brown to the, to the right four receivers. And now three as Baum motions back. JT, he'll jump pass to Samuel, who's got it for another Ohio State touchdown. Shades of Urban Meyer with the Gators and Tim Tebow. Well, people see the jump pass, and they, you know, I think people get it <laughs> kind of excited to see, boy, the jump pass like Tim Tebow, but it's actually really effective because what it does to the defense they think quarterback run and they lose their man, their man in coverage it's not a gimmick play right it's, a, no, it's effective no very effective Ohio State with a marathon march after the fourth down stop 15 plays 85 yards three touchdowns and a field goal tonight in their four possessions here's Samuel right here and he's going to work across you see the cushion but watch the linebackers when they see run up into the line of scrimmage and now it's right there it's wide open jump pass linebackers come up to take away the quarterback run and because of how soft the coverage was I'm not really sure why the defensive back was seven or eight yards deep there's a good look at him Kyron Williams I don't know why he's defending the back of the end zone when as soon as you cross the goal line it's a touchdown it takes a lot for Urban Meyer to smile in season there have been very few smiles the last few weeks but that's like memories <laughs> he well, he's, that he, he's also been 
a little bit against the grain this week. The, the, a lot of the media has asked him what's wrong with the offense, what's wrong with the team, what's going on, and he's kind of been optimistic, which has surprised some people this week, almost like he knew something that nobody else knew despite some of their recent struggles against Wisconsin and Penn State and, and Northwestern offensively in the last few weeks. You heard it. There were some boos here by the home fans a week ago against Northwestern for the play calling. Not tonight. A four touchdown lead heading to halftime. And the kick is taken by McNitt, the fullback who recovered them up punt earlier. The Buckeyes in total control here in a first half that has featured an injury to Tommy Armstrong, who was taken to the hospital here in Columbus, started off in a neck brace. That obviously the most serious concern at this point. And Ohio State, good first half from JT Barrett in charge in the horseshoe. Limiting Nebraska to just 123 yards of total offense. Sam? Coach, first things first, what do you know about Tommy's injury? Well, we, we think that everything checked out okay, but that is exactly why they took him to the hospital, to just make sure of all that stuff, and, and uh, that's all I really know from there. Coach, when you're in a situation like this where the adversity off the field is big and the adversity on the field is big, how do you handle that with your team in the locker room? I think right now they have to be assured everything's okay with Tommy, I think, if they knew that. And then the next thing is is that we, we've just got to play better football. I think they'd feel a lot better if we just made some plays, made some tackles. We're having a hard time getting them off the field. So I think I think we just got to pull it together and play some ball. How do you help Riker through this? Obviously, a tough environment and difficult situation situation to jump in there. Well, I'm, I've got some confidence in Riker. I think that he can make some plays and do a good job for us. And, and then guys are going to have to help all around him. You know, there's going to have to be some guys make some plays as receivers. We've got to win some one-on-one -on -one coverage. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Appreciate the class of Mike Riley there. Certainly encouraging news what he passed along about the condition of Tommy Armstrong. Nebraska's a wonderful second-half team, a great fourth-quarter team. They have their work cut out for them tonight, however, in Columbus. The Capital One Halftime Report is coming up next. After months of campaigning, November is finally here. Every week, every game, every vote counts. From around the nation, they hail, all promising to make the postseason great again. See who rocked the vote for the college football playoff. Ohio well, State making a statement tonight as we say welcome back to ESPN Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by Walmart. This presentation of the Big Ten on ESPN. Ohio State number six in those playoff committee first rankings and leading by four touchdowns at halftime. Chris Fowler back with Kirk Kirk Street. You know, Buckeyes got off to the best possible start. Minute and a half in, Damon Webb has a pick six. There were a couple of chances Nebraska preps to get back in at Kirk, but their first possession stalled, had to kick a field goal. And then on that fourth and one, after Armstrong was knocked out of the game, couldn't, couldn't get that yard. Yeah, he picked up a big first down to keep that drive alive and obviously was, was taken out of the football game. Nebraska and, and Mike Riley, th this second half is about fighting and continuing to show wh where this program is. You do not want to get this game away from you. Ohio State takes the ball to start this second half, and you, you're going to see Urban Meyer. He's not going to be pleased either, either, even though he's up by 28. They're going to keep pressing as well. Let's go to Samantha Ponder for an update on Armstrong's condition. Yeah, Chris, I caught up with Mike Riley coming out of the locker room and asked what he'd been told. He said that the medical doctors on the team staff told him that fortunately there has not been anything related to the spine. And that was the biggest concern after you see what was basically him immediately going unconscious, what, which created all of that concern. They still are saying that he's able to move his extremities, which is great news as you see him given the thumbs up there. I asked Mike if he was going to be able to go home with the team or if he had to stay in the hospital. He said he doesn't know yet. I would describe him right now as cautiously optimistic. And Sam Pickett, that is somewhat reassuring. First down, Barrett looks for Samuel downfield, and he's got it still running. Curtis Samuel and the Buckeyes build the lead. 75 yards.
Everybody at Ohio State, mostly the players and coaches, have been waiting for the big play explosion, the downfield shots to connect. And tonight that one did. They have been waiting for weeks, Urban Meyer, for his quarterback and receivers to hit a deep one. First play of the second half, they go back to Samuel and give JT Barrett another chance. You pointed it out, Kirk, as we take another look at this. A play action fake just kind of froze, folks. Yeah, he's out here. The play action will freeze here. Now it's just one on one. And Curtis Samuel, who can get separation, does in a hurry. One on one with a safety. Samuel's going to win that battle every single time. Pulls away from Williams. The ball actually pulled him back. But then that's where his athletic ability, his running back background, comes into play. Not only can he get downfield, he can do this. He's able to pull away and come up with a big touchdown. You know, Ohio State, I don't think they've completed a pass over 20 yards in maybe three weeks, three or four weeks. I have tonight, and consecutive Ohio State plays produce Barrett to Samuel touchdown passes, a little jump pass at the end of the half, and then the 75-yarder. The and Curtis Samuel continues to be one of the most dynamic players in the country. When you give it the ball to him, his average per touchdown is going to be way up over 10 yards after what he's done tonight. Again, the only guy in FBS, 500 rushing and receiving coming in. He's added, especially to his receiving totals tonight. Uh, he, I thought they might try to get him 20 touches tonight, and so far he's up to 13. Some big yards. Durbin drives it once again toward the corner, and it's Bryant at the goal line. And he gets out across the 20. Here's our Pacific Life game summary. And look at some of the plays that shaped that first half right from the start. He talked about that interception off a tip pass by Raquan McMillan. Kind of set the tone for Ohio State playing at home. Ball goes up in the air. The safety web is there to come up with it. Uses the speed. A little move there to get into the end zone to give Ohio State a 7 0 lead. And then is really JT Barrett improvising. Here a nice throw. And then the jump pass. And then the last one, first play of the second half. Safeties come up and run support, creates a one on one opportunity. And JT Barrett gives Samuel a chance for the big play. So Riker Fife again throws over the middle. It's almost intercepted. Diving attempt there by Chris Worley. Again, Fife forced into duties because of Armstrong's injury. He's had very little experience the last couple of years. Watch Chris Worley right here. Really, I think, surprised. Fife because I think he was expecting him to go out into the flat but instead sinks with Westerkamp and almost comes up with a great interception great athletic ability for an outside linebacker really thinking he should have had that one it would have been his first pick of the year and now they ended up inside Newby burst forward and it'll be third down and about four Nebraska has been such a good second half and fourth quarter team because they've been able to methodically grind out drives dominate time of possession. You can't do that in a hole like this clearly. Four of ten on third down tonight. And Fife lofts it downfield. Incomplete. Coming over to break the play up there was Denzel Ward because Stanley Morgan thought he had a catch. Yeah, and again, they're going to put their three best cover guys, Lattimore, Ward, and Conley, one on one, isolated, a little shake, kind of a stutter and go. And that's all Denzel Ward. The ball was thrown pretty well. And, you know, you look at Morgan, he's got his hands on the ball, but the fleet footed Denzel Ward knocks that ball away there on third down. Morgan made the one deep catch, Kirk, but he's had a couple other chances to make plays tonight. Has not been able to come up with the catch. Lightborn boots it away as a change of punt returner. That's Curtis Samuel back there replacing Wilson. And Samuel trying to make something electric happen. Retreats and now just decides to duck down at the 13-yard line. Secured the ball on the bounce. He though. did that, importantly. Another game of playoff impact coming up later tonight on ESPN, 10.30 Eastern Time, 7.30 on the West Coast in Berkeley. 
Jake Browning and Washington certainly in position to move up with number four Texas A&M stumbling today to Mississippi State. Huskies probably felt slighted not to be in the top four anyway, undefeated, sitting there behind a one-loss SEC team, a chance to make a statement tonight. But you think Cal's going to be a little tricky for him? I think Cal can score. Their defense is a sieve, so they'll give up a ton of points, but they can they can score points. It was a first down throw as the Buckeyes look for more here. Noah Brown was bracketed though. The passing game has been such a struggle. The execution, whether it's been little things, a lot of times it's the receivers, right? Or the well, pass pro. Do you think they maybe want to work on that even yeah, more in the yeah, second half? Even sure. with a big lead? Sure. I, I think, you know, they, they have to because a lot of their successful passes tonight have been when JT Barrett's improvised. This is KJ Hill getting his first touch of the night, and now a young guy gets out across the 25 yard line. It's a good run pass option where they had three receivers at the bottom and only two defenders so instead of running with Mike Weber good recognition there by JT Barrett to throw it out there where they have two blockers on the two defenders and KJ Hill shows that he's got some quickness after he makes the catch there in the slot Another first down throw. And you look inside for the tight end ball. Picks up about seven. Yeah, and, you know, and I think you know, Urban Meyer, much like Nick Saban, they, they really don't get caught up with 12.50 to go in a third quarter. They're not looking at the scoreboard. You know, it's about executing and, and trying to put a drive together and trying to put points up on the board. Whether it's run, throw, whatever, whatever you would do early in the game when the game is close, you're going to continue to do here. With, like I said, 12.30 to go in the third quarter, despite the 38-3 to three score. Second and three, Barrett takes off and dives near the marker at the 35. And, Here. Kirk, this is encouraging. It is a motorcade. They're bringing Tommy Armstrong back to the stadium. Our news editor, Michael Allen, reporting that he's left the hospital quickly. He wasn't there very long. It's more encouraging news than the news. short drive back to Ohio Stadium, and his teammates will certainly be relieved to hear that. Earlier, you heard Sam Ponder relay what Mike Riley had told her, the belief that there was no spinal damage at all. They were very cautious, as you would expect them to be. But the news continues to be encouraging. And he's a first down for Ohio State. Buckeyes visit Maryland, then go to East Lansing, try for payback against the Spartans who came in here and beat him last year, and then, of course, Michigan. Sparty lost to Illinois today. It was a shocker. Barrett, the long throw to Weber, who is wide open on the sideline, and the running back scoots out near midfield. Another little wrinkle from the Buckeyes tonight. Just kind of a check down, but with instead of just checking it down like you would normally see just right in front of the quarterback, they take Mike Weber all the way to the right, and it's about, again, how they stretch a defense horizontally from sideline to sideline, whether it's a jet sweep, a throw like that, perimeter run, make the defense respect that part of the offense. Opens up, again, other areas. Weber plows ahead for a short game. And when you can keep the, the hang player, the safeties out wide, it really can open up the inside running game. Oh, this is just wonderful. That's great. A live picture of Tommy Armstrong walking back into Ohio Stadium. Look, his fiance there, a quick hug. Wow. He's got That's the great. scrubs on. But uh, that is wonderful news. If you think about what the what the scene was here, Kirk, about a half hour ago, late in the second quarter. He's walking fast, too. He seems like he wants to get back out here to his, his teammates. Barrett from the pocket delivers. That's a strike to ball again as they move it to the Nebraska 30. This gives you an indication of what JT Barrett can do. Watch his head. Little play fake, little shoulder. Watch his head. He's working left, all the way back to the right, keeps his feet moving, puts the ball right on the money. 
Great job by that offensive line. It's given up some pressure in the last few weeks. Doing a great job of holding out the Nebraska defensive line and pass rush to give Barrett time to work from his left all the way back through his progression to his right. Weber. Wow. They've had a hard time tackling Mike Weber tonight. He's loose again inside the 10. Nebraska will be disappointed about lots of things in this game, but tackling is, is on the list as Weber is slowly get up. Yeah, and, and they're dealing with a powerful back who's gaining confidence each week. Watch him work off that double team. Pat Elfline, the center up trying to get to Banderas, the linebacker. I'll tell you, this is a freshman, Mike Weber. Every single week, you, you're learning a little bit more about him. Tough to bring down. Bang down hard on the shoulder. He's out of the game with Samuels in there. It is hard to bring down, but I think from, from the Nebraska perspective, they, they will be very disappointed in this tackling effort tonight. Yeah, 38 to 3. The, ta the first thing to go is usually the effort and tackling. Barrett still got the football. Fires for the quarter of the end zone. Touchdown. And it's Ball, or excuse me, Noah Brown getting involved. Not, not the fade, but working back toward the pylon. And Meyer throws a dart. The exact throw they threw in overtime against Wisconsin. It's kind of a, a fade comeback. He gets across the, the goal line for a touchdown. And, and there's the progressive pylon cam. Ball is thrown right there on the money. Breaks the plane. Touchdown. And JT, who did not have a touchdown throwing or running last week, now has four touchdown passes tonight. Another long march for Ohio State, 87 yards in nine plays. But for Nebraska, the really encouraging news is that Tommy Armstrong is striding back out into the stadium. Relieved, certainly. He won't like what he sees on the scoreboard. Saturday Night Football, presented by Walmart, brought to you by Buick, proud partner of the NCAA, Belfort Property Restoration, restoring more than property, B-E-L-F-O-R dot com, and CarMax, drive what's possible. That's the best picture of the night, Tommy Armstrong a moment ago, jogging, jogging back to go down the line of teammates. That's Jordan Westerkamp, his buddy, his roommate with a hug, and he went down to almost every Cornhusker teammate there, Pearsonell, his receiver. Just tremendous to see. I have to say it's it was it's pretty stunning to it see him is. running back out here like that. Very cool and very cool to see the reception he received here from the Ohio State crowd. Bryant from the five and has tried to get back against the green all night on a return. It's so tough to escape that left corner of the Buckeyes coverage unit. Let's get out to the 25 yard line. You know, with, with, with how quickly he was getting out of the, the car and into the locker room, you could just feel that he wanted to get back to his team. You know, not, not to play, but just to be here for his guys and talk to them and be there for them. True leader. We didn't want to say it, Kirk, but it was hard not to think that Armstrong, as a senior, when you see him take an off like that, you, you wonder if it's, if it's the last time he'll be in a Nebraska uniform, but it doesn't certainly appear to be that way. Fife, his replacement, throws a dart to Western Camp. Sam? Chris, I mean, the guy is a competitor. I don't, it's incredible to see down here. He's already coaching his teammates up. I mean, he sees the score. He knows what the situation is, but he's down here trying to help him out to get more points on the board. It is just incredible what we have witnessed tonight. Sammy, he's talking right now to Zach Darlington, the sophomore quarterback, who, who looks like may get a chance to play tonight as well. And he's just making sure he's got everything covered if he gets in there. Fight from the pocket, lofts it over the head of Seathan Carter. And there he is, going down the line to, to different teammates there. Maybe they're just probably also stunned and, and obviously clearly pleased to see him. Oh, yeah. Nate Garrett. Three on third down. And Fife again takes a downfield shot. 
No flag. Right now a late flag does come in as Damon Arnett was blanketing Westerkamp. The official nearest the play didn't throw it, but it was thrown from deep. Yeah, there, one official right there did not make the call. Now they're going to talk about what they both saw. I kind of like that when the officials come together and, and work together. Back judge and side judge having a conversation. There is no foul yeah. for yeah, defensive that's... pass interference on the previous play. Side judge kind of talked him out of it, you think, yeah, and it'll but, be fourth down. Dave, honestly, bringing Dave Kataya, when, when, when officials come together like that, and they're, they're, you see there's his head turned and looking for the football, which you look for. But do you like to see that, the officials come together? And, and What did you see? This is what I saw. Absolutely. It's all angles. That back judge is an inside-out look, and they had to get together and talk because the side judge was responsible for that man. It was a good no call. And Dave, so Demario McCall is back to return punts. He's the third different Buckeye to do that. After Wilson muffed the earlier one, and uh oh, McCall is so auditioning for the job. He kind of makes a nice uh, escape there and then gets dragged down by a horse collar by McNitt and then led 15 more under the return. Maybe, maybe McCall is the answer. Maybe McCall is going to be the guy. Because it's been an adventure all year. There's the horse collar at the end of the play. But McCall not only secures the ball, but he's. The escapability? Yeah, yeah, pulling away. Personal foul, horse collar tackle, kicking team number 41. 15 yards from the end of the run, automatic first down. Buckeyes will continue to have great field position as they try to add to a night an offense that has not included a single punt for the Buckeyes, 45-3. Cassidy Hubbard with the Dr. Pepper Championship Drive update. After a scoreless game through the first three quarters, Jalen Hurts busts out a beautiful 21-yard TD run. He actually has the FBS best fourth quarter QBR this season. Bama on the board, first 7-0 in the fourth. Chris Herbie, back to you. That has been a grinding defensive game there. Thanks, Cassidy. 108,750 in the horseshoe, second biggest crowd ever as the Buckeyes go back to work. That's Mario McCall. Kirk, the six possessions for Ohio State, which all came after the pick six by Webb. Wow. 57 in touch, 83 in a touchdown. After the shank punt, they're over 20 for a field goal. Then drives of 85, 75, and 87 yards. Yeah, you're looking at four drives over 75 yards, the one big play to start the second half when they hit Curtis Samuel. But that, that's about as impressive as you could ask for if you're Urban Meyer. Yes, it is. Jeez. There, it's got a lot of time, and now just takes off and scoots into Cornhusker territory. Maybe third down. And, and I think more than anything, you get into the month of November. It's a month that Urban Meyer always has stressed with his his great teams. And even though they kind of limped into this month, it's so important for their growth as a young team. The adversity that they've been through will really allow them to grow, and 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 I think develop in ways that maybe they were lacking before they went through games like Penn State and Wisconsin and all of a sudden you start to mature a little bit and those guys who are first time starters have a different feel to them as the season progresses here in this month. Merritt in third and five finds Wilson who scoots for a first down inside the 40. The loss about this time last year here to Michigan State that's the one blemish on Myers November record at Ohio State so he really knows how to get teams peaking at the right time and the questions I think will will begin to Kirk focus on whether he likes it or not the visit by Michigan and will this offensive performance will that encourage fans that he can be free and call plays like this against the Wolverines in a much you would figure tighter closer game. Barrett gave a pump fake and now just ducks down and really I think that's that's what it's about whether you're Jim Harbaugh in Ann Arbor or you're Urban Meyer in Columbus. People since August, before a, a ball was snapped, before there was the opening kickoff, everybody knew that the Ohio State-Michigan game was going to be significant. Potentially both teams undefeated. Big Ten championship, champ, chance to go into the playoff, possibly all that on the line. So when you know that, it's about building and growing and developing until you get to November 26th and you hope you play your best ball on that day. Barrett still firing and completing it as they continue to find Hill there continue to work on the passing game despite the 42 point margin. And I think the other thing here tonight even though this game's kind of gotten out of hand 
with JT Barrett still trying to get comfortable with his rhythm as a passer with all these new receivers, it was receivers from last year all in the NFL, I still feel like when I watch him, he's still getting comfortable outside of Noah Brown. He's still feeling a lot of these new guys, whether it's Hill or McLaurin, or if Victor's going to get a chance to come out there, Paris Campbell. So I think each opportunity you have and every rep you have in game action is important, not so much for JT Barrett, but definitely for the receivers. Weber on third and one tries to bounce it, and he's going to be hit for a loss. And Nebraska's defense does make a stand here. It's going to be fourth down and short. And the offense, of course, stays on the field. You know, when you talk to guys who analyze QB's skill set, Barrett doesn't have the quickest release, so it makes it important that he has the timing, the trust with the receivers oh, yeah. you're talking about. Yeah, and, and I think a big part of his game when he's really on is anticipating. And, and to be a quarterback and, and, and with an ability to anticipate, you've got to trust your receivers and have your timing down. Got to figure quarterback run here, but they break the tendency, and he drops back straight and throws it. And the catch is made underneath for a first down as A.J. Alexander, who had one catch coming in as his second tonight. I was surprised myself, Chris. Like you said, he could have even taken off here to his left and probably picked up the first down. That is a tight window and a heck of a catch by the big freshman tight end out of Virginia. It was. A run would have been much easier than that. Yeah, if, if he took off to his left, he's five, ten yards down. he's feeling as a passer he's tonight. Still, still, remember, we've talked about still working on the, on the passing. It's McCall getting a touch, spinning away, but right back into a tackler. So again, just, just to follow up on that, the, the confidence with the receivers, the timing, getting it all going. And, and I think this plays into it. We, we were talking about their vertical passing game. You know, the opening the second half, the one big one. Other than that, that's the only completion downfield. Everything else, you can see a lot in the middle, off to his right. A lot of, a lot of that has been improvised and kind of moving around. But I think that's why you're seeing Urban Meyer still with his foot on the gas here. Take it to McCall, look over the middle, and they try to find that rangy freshman, Victor, who came close to a touchdown earlier and get him his first career touchdown, but just overshot. Nice of JT Barrett to try to go back to him. They, they have a lot of confidence in this young man as far as his future. JT Barrett waits and waits for him to try to clear from Chris Jones. He gets does a good job of getting inside. Now he tries to separate. Remember, Jones has good size, too, and is rangy himself at corner. Barrett, even after that incompletion, 12 of his last 14 for 178 and three touchdowns. Need eight on this third down from the pocket. And juggling catch made by Wilson. And see where they spot it. I think he almost put that one through his chest. He threw that ball with some velocity. And it's a first down. Urban going here from half a hundred before the third quarter ends. And a Nebraska defense that has been pushed backwards hasn't been able to force a single punt tonight. The, the will draining away play by play here. We'll take the play clock down and then spend a timeout just before it expires. Well, JT Barrett has shown a little bit of everything tonight. Working through his progressions, the offensive line giving him time to be able to work from his left all the way back to his right. But the pocket presence with that offensive line doing a better job stepping up Climbing that pocket, giving him a chance there. And we've seen quite a bit of this, especially in the first half. Ability to improvise and keep plays alive. And this is first play of the second half. Watch Curtis Samuel get some separation. Finally, Ohio State hits a big throw downfield.
pretty good looking stat line, even though, again, he could have been more. And I'm sure JT, being a perfectionist, will be will be happy with the victory, but he'll look back at some of those overthrows, as misses that could have even produced a bigger night. Oh, yeah. Probably close to 350, 375 yards if he hits some of those balls that were overthrown for a couple more touchdowns. This has to feel pretty good. It's been a while since Ohio State's offense has played with this much freedom, this much explosion. And they flip it around here to Corey Smith, who makes a rare appearance, Kirk. Well, he has been hampered by injury all year. And he has not played since the Rutgers game. You go all the way back to the 2014 year when Ohio State won the national championship. He had 20 receptions that year, and they really thought with so much youth on the edge that he would be a guy that they could count on this year, but he's been slow to get back. I did double take when I saw number five with the football. <laughs> I know. Isn't that, isn't that a touch in a while? And he comes in motion, and they fake it to him, give it to McCall, who worms his way down inside the five. It'll be third and short. A lot of guys getting a chance to touch the football that don't usually for Ohio State. Pretty smart not to work Mike Weber in this kind of situation. Let Curtis Samuel have a breather with yeah. this thing in hand. Get him, get him fresh for the stretch run. Especially when Weber came down on that shoulder after true. one of his longer runs. McCall, I think, is another one of these true freshmen that they feel very, very good about what he'll be able to do in the future. 5'9", about 182 pounds. Only had 20 carries coming in, Kirk, but he was averaging over seven yards a carry. Now they pop it to Smith again, see if they can get him a touchdown, but he is knocked down behind the line of scrimmage there. Chris Jones, the corner, still selling out. Yeah, of course. Jones does a good job of setting that edge. These corners all year have been very physical. Kalu on the other side, 10. Jones that time coming up, not afraid to be involved in run support. Keep say, I keep saying this freshman and that freshman. You look at Ohio State's too deep on the offensive side of the ball, other than Pat Elfline. You, you Wilson. You're not going to find very many seniors, yeah. any seniors, that are contributing. This entire team is back next year on the offensive side and most of the defense. Well, the play clock just winding down here inside of minute 45 in the third quarter in Ohio State. You know, Take a timeout. And the fourth and four coming up. Took the delay a game. Oh, did they? Gonna okay, kick, so they kicked the field. I was assuming he was going to go for it here. They're going to tack on three here. Give Tyler Durbin a chance to try a field goal. Penn State won big at home against Iowa. Very impressive start for the Lions, and they they blasted the Hawkeyes, who will now limp home to host Michigan next week as Penn State keeps pace. Durbin from 29. And he's two for two tonight. And Ohio State makes it 48-3. Well, Tuesday, there's a fairly important event going on in this country which you may have heard of and then there's the reveal of the playoff rankings Tuesday night if you want to change a pace you know flip over there and yeah, we'll be, we'll, whatever we'll be. You, whatever way you're leaning on Tuesday night, you may want to watch you may want some to football give yourself talk. an hour yes. you, may, you may want to hang out with us and break down the rankings <laughs> I know I'll be happy to be there <laughs> but they'll change your face you, know, you see in 2014 Ohio State was 16th in the initial rankings and of course got up to the four seed and won the national championship. Three of the four came out of the initial rankings. Last year was Oklahoma which was 15th beat Baylor in that game we saw in Waco eventually shot up to number four. Clemson went wire to wire of course before losing to Bama in the championship game. Clemson stayed undefeated a beat down today at home. So they're very much in the mix. You'd figure, you know, Alabama, if they can hold the 7 0 lead they have in Baton Rouge midway fourth quarter, you'd figure the tide would stay at the top. Clemson two. Yeah, I would, I would Michigan think so. three. Yeah, that's what I would think. And if Washington wins out at Berkeley, then they would be sitting there at four. 
And Trey Bryant, the freshman returner, is busy tonight. And we get another shot from that corner on the left side. This time he tries to stay to the right, shakes off a hit, and gets out near the 30-yard line. You know, you look at these rankings, and because of the results tonight, one thing that stands out to me is the All-State playoff rankings. Number eight, if you're in Madison and you're watching this game, you're the winner tonight. Because with Nebraska losing, Wisconsin now controls its own destiny to get to Indianapolis. And theoretically, if they keep winning, and if they win in Indy, they can control their own destiny to get to the playoff. So tonight, a big win for Ohio State, and the big winner besides Ohio State is Wisconsin. Let's go to Cassidy in the studio. Thanks, Chris. Dr. Pepper Championship Drive update. Number five, Washington taking on Cal. Huskies down three until Jake Browning finds John Rosh for a 60-yard touchdown pass. It's 7-3 Washington right now in the first. This game over on ESPN. Chris, Herbie, back to you. Cassidy, thank you. That is a dynamic passing game that Chris Peterson has. Fife collects the snap and just misfires. Here are the Washington Huskies who were placed at fifth by the committee. They did win against Stanford to look better at the time. Got to yeah. win at Utah late. Yeah, don't don't be fooled by the seven and the 17. That, that's what they were ranked when they played them. The Utah win was impressive. That's probably the only win that's impressive for Washington at this point. But next week. Maybe one of the hottest teams in the Pac-12, probably the hottest team in the Pac-12, USC, they play next week and then end with Washington State on the road. I'd be very surprised, personally, if Washington runs the table. SC thumping Oregon today. And they throw it up, and it is intercepted. On the far side, Hooker weaving his way. Malik Hooker followed with his blocks like a running back. What an effort. Pick six, number two tonight for Ohio State, and number six for the season. Six house calls for this defense after interceptions. That's Hooker's second. There is actually a flag down. So I don't know if it's a block in the black back or a celebration. We'll have to see. It's over by the Nebraska sideline. There was a scuffle, I think, Bosa was getting into with Nick After the Bates. the play was over, they're offsetting unsportsmanlike conduct fouls. Defense number 97. 68 on White. Those fouls offset, the touchdown count. So it stands. Those are two feisty cats. Yeah. Nick, Nick Gates for, for Nebraska is their, their best and feistiest offensive lineman. And the young Buck Bosa getting into it after the pick six. Yeah. That's surprising. What a run by Hooker. Uh, I mean, oh, he, yeah. could, he, he could do everything athletically. We know he's a great basketball you, player. You, I was going to say, you and I had a chance to, to sit down with him a couple weeks ago talking to him about hoops, and he kind of looked like a, a guard weaving his way up the, <laughs> up the court there. Except there are a lot more guys than on a basketball court. Right? That was a terrific, yeah. instinctive run. Just a great feel. A sophomore who's got more football to play at Ohio State, but after he's done here, you're going to see him on Sundays. He, this guy's a tremendous watch, talent. Watch Denzel Ward right there, the tip. That gave him the opportunity. So it's Hooker that gets the pick. Great job by Ward. Watch this effort right here by Denzel. Look how long Ward is. He skied. I mean, he got up in the air, and the oh, presence and the awareness there by Malik Hooker, who takes his back, has such a good feel as a runner in the open field. Great job by Ward. 5'10", 185 pounds, but Hooker now his second interception return for a touchdown on the year. How about it, Kirk? Both big sixes have assists. McMillan tipped it to Webb, and that time Ward tipping it to, to Hooker there. And some, some serious hoop skills. I mean, this guy, he could, he could have been a tremendous college basketball player. You want hops? Yeah. Lefty dunk. And now with, like, Michael Jordan's number, it looks like, it looks like, King of air right there. But when we brought up basketball, he, 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 his face kind of lit up. He's very confident in his skills. He says there's a few guys on the team, but they can they can get out there and play the game a little bit. Let me shake his hand and he just it swallows it. He's got three XL gloves that he wears. He says those barely fit. It's like he palm that ball, throw it down.
I think old Trey Bryant's just worn out from returning kicks tonight. He's going to let that one go. He's had enough over there. Now, late tonight on ESPN, after that Huskies Bears game, Sports Center at night, John Bucciagrass and Kevin Connors run down today in college football. Of course, the NBA, NHL, latest NFL news, Sports Center at night, also on the Watch ESPN app. Speaking of the NHL, I flipped on my little ESPN app last night. Talking Blue Jackets? I said, this has to be a glitch. The, the, the final score cannot be Columbus 10, Montreal nothing. Yeah, yeah. They had lost a game all year, Canadians. Yeah. Came until, in here 9 until, until 1. They, until they came to Columbus. Until they, until they I, came I seriously to, thought that has to be, it can't be 10 nothing. 10. I was sitting there thinking, can, we, can you save just a few? For, exactly. I think they lost tonight 2 1 and over. It's got to be a franchise record, though. <laughs> Kidding me? I mean, Montreal has played a lot of hockey games. Yeah. And more than anybody going back. I don't know how many times they've given up double digit goals and, and lost you, by 10 goals. Did you take it over to the arena last night or were you enjoying dinner? I, I, I did not. I told you I, I was having a beautiful dinner and I checked the app afterwards and saw the hockey score. I was kind of kind of glad that uh, I didn't go. But on the other hand, you're seeing something historic and people yeah. over there and see yeah. that. Yeah, you're, you're not going to see that very often. Jackets getting 10. Well, Buckeyes would like to see this more often. Getting 55, double nickel after three quarters here. Back after this message and a word from your local ABC station. Well, Pink Panthers all dressed up in the Buckeye band uniform. They just entertain the crowd here. To hang on, Slippy. Traditional in the third court favorite. I think the other big fella, he got rid of the Cheetos bag. Worked through that in the first half. <laughs> they work hard. They're allowed to have fun oh, on a Saturday band. night, too. They, they rehearse here you. endlessly, right? Told you. you got, what, the band is up there with some of the elite in the history of Ohio State. Sacred. Fife still fighting there. Gets it to Morgan. Makes a couple guys miss and dives into Ohio State territory at the 46. Not many Nebraska players were, were here. Armstrong, who thankfully we've seen come back to the sideline. He was a true freshman kind of signaling plays in when they came here for their last visit 2012. But for Nebraska fans, it's beginning to look eerily similar, except they have a lot fewer points on the board. Newby gets the corner and rumbles down inside the 30. Just ran right around the true freshman Jordan Fuller, who Yep. Be spoken to about that. Yeah, they've got uh, an entire new group of linebackers and, and defensive backs right now with Jordan Fuller in there as a backup safety and Eric Smith. Fuller's actually a true freshman. See the linebackers, Berger and Feta getting a chance to play as well. There is Armstrong. He earlier ran back out after a brief examination at the hospital and seems to be just fine. His replacement, Fife, incomplete. Couldn't come up with it. It's a tough situation there. Berger defending on Seath and Carter. Good job tonight in coverage and breaking up passes, getting their arms in there, denying the Nebraska receivers the ball. Fife slings it again off the hands of Carter as he felt some pressure on the blind side. Yeah, I mean, I, even coming into the game, Nebraska knew that there was some concern up front with the offensive line. We mentioned earlier that Corey Whitaker uh, was in at right guard as a backup. Cole Conrad has played tonight on the right side as well. So starting two backups on the right side. And, and to be candid, even with their starters on the road at night in this environment against this front from Ohio State, it, it would have been a tough night, but just not able to run the football much at all tonight. It's put, then they got down, it's put a lot on this passing game. Third and ten for five, slings it complete. Morgan makes the catch down near the ten yard line. Heck of a throw there by five. He had to go over top of the linebacker this time. 
I should make that throw over Feta. A heck of a throw here on third and long. The timing is there for a backup quarterback. You don't always get as many reps as a starter. It's a nice job. The guy had only thrown five passes all season coming in, and none since September. Newbie dances back inside and earns about two yards inside the 10. Nebraska, if nothing else, would like to find the end zone here for the first time tonight. I thought it was key. You say, yeah, okay, it's a, it's a 52 point game. It's a mismatch. But early on, if they could have answered Ohio State's pick six with a touchdown in the next possession, who knows? They might have got a yeah. foothold in this game, yeah. but they got stopped down in here close. It's been it's been tough for them. And on the road, once you dig yourself a hole, tough to get back. Fife fires it over the head of Mornay Pearsonell. Denzel Ward, excellent corner, still in coverage. You know, Ohio State last year, Kirk, had two corners who played more than a thousand snaps. So there's an effort this year to really keep guys fresh for the stretch run. They rotate a bunch of guys in there, and now the starters have played far less than that. So it should be fresher yeah, for the big games ahead. I really think the development of Ward to go along with Lattimore and Conley, who you knew had a chance to be starters, they have three guys that they have a lot of confidence in. Five. Almost intercepted. That was Ward who jumped it there. Fife kind of backpedaling as he threw that. Lucky to avoid a pick. Well, he backpedaled because of the pass rush that he felt. This is actually Robert Landers over the left guard. Watch this move. Well, he is he is a handful to deal with in the interior as a young freshman. That's why he kind of comes off that throw. But Denzel Ward, Nebraska's had some success on the slants. This time he jumped it. Almost stepped in front of it, and he would have gone about 95 yards to, to the end zone. Another pick six. <laughs> Nobody there could have catch him. He can fly. Fourth and eight. He can make a first down down near the one. Fife looking from the slant. Westerkamp battling, muscling. I don't think he's got first down yardage. They're going to spot him outside the one, despite. An effort to shake off a couple of three Buckeyes to get there. I think he's going to be just short. Yep, that's clearly short of the yellow line where they're spawning it. They're just hoping he could break one tackle. But needed to break about three to get the first down. Official held up a, a fist. For four down, but I believe that, that was what, a fourth down. Watch play. how he spins 38, who's Feta. He avoids him, almost pulls away there from Arnett. And then you see both the safeties coming in to keep him short, it looks like, of the first down. And maybe he got it. Yeah, they're going to stretch that chain out there. Well, I say players know, and now, now the call of first down is made. Initially, they were holding up fist, but that was a fourth down play. So Westerkamp battled hard, but. Not quite enough. A long night in Columbus for the guys from Lincoln. Let's take a break. Goodyear providing aerial coverage. Committed to honoring Glimpworthy athletes who demonstrate hard work on and off the field. Goodyear, official sponsor of the college football playoff. It is a final in Baton Rouge, a blanking on the Bayou by Nick Saban in the Crimson Tide, 10 zip over LSU. So number one escapes the potential upset trap that Lee Corso and Lil Wayne, is that for a duo, both called for this morning yeah. on College Game Day. Joe Burrow has replaced JT Barrett. Barrett's night is apparently done. The 290 yard, four touchdown passing effort. And they hand it off to DeMario McCall, who bursts out over the 10. And the All-State bus, Curtis Wilson cruising into Columbus for us. And now it's time for your All-State street cred. Yep, street cred had fun on this all year long with All-State. You can check it out. Give me your opinion. Go to hashtag street cred. And let me know your team that you think deserves it. Mississippi State, the winner this week. Their fourth win against the uh, the top 10 the AP top 10 in like what the last three last three years you have to 
go back about 28 years if you are looking for their four Nick previous Fitzgerald's wins. Day. He threw the ball, ran the ball well. The Bear, Chris Felica, picked Mississippi State to win outright today on college game day, so we'll tip our cap to him. But look at the defense holding the Texas A&M offense to only 117 yards rushing. So it's a big win for Dan McMullen and the Bulldogs at home. And goodbye to Texas A&M sitting there at no, number four. No more argument. They're sitting there at four. Now they're down the road. In terms of playoff, yeah. Yes. Burrow keeps it. And it's wrestled down after a yard loss. So Palika picked Mississippi State. That makes up for the misses in the Breeders' Cup. I don't know. Yeah, there to give a rough day in the, at the Breeders' Cup. He he he's, you know, he's had a rough couple days. I think. At the you know, you know, I know your mic's on, I'm Chris. Just tell me. <laughs> he says it's a rough day. It's okay. <laughs> he's a competitor. He'll just keep swinging. <laughs> you got a lot of second place horses. He says he did second, third, and fourth. But the only bet just couldn't hit that number one. <laughs> he's not making place bets apparently today. <laughs> third and five for Joe Burrow and his. First series in relief. And Burrow on a slant makes a completion to KJ Hill, and they move the sticks out near the 30. Nice poise by Burrow. Brought the, both the linebackers, and Newby actually got to him just as he was about to throw the ball. It affected his follow through. Watch Newby three. He'll come in clean right into the face, but he recognizes the void because of those two linebackers. and and gets the ball to K.J. Hill. Nice job catching it with his hands, and K.J. Hill quietly having a nice night. This is McCall, and he cuts it back, and Mario McCall eager to make the most of his chances tonight in relief of Weber, who's out for the evening, and to Cassidy for an update. All right, Chris, so Florida seemed to lose its grasp on the SEC East with their loss to Arkansas, but this may affect that. Tied at 24. Rodrigo Blankenship with the 25-yard field goal to win it. Georgia beats Kentucky 27-24. Chris Herbie, back to you. That's the third SEC loss for the Cats, Mark Stoops. I can't figure out if anybody is going to show up in Atlanta from the SEC East. They might want to cancel the SEC championship game. I don't know if anybody's going to want to play Alabama. I don't think that, that that's going to happen. Uh, they, the SEC East is awful this year. Just bad. Of course, that'll be if Alabama keeps rolling. You got that Iron Bowl game against Auburn, which is playing excellent football. So don't, don't put Alabama quite there yet. But I think you're safe in putting them there personally, but that's okay. Burrow to Hill. And KJ dancing free, knocked down at the 50. And if, if you're Joe Burrow, red shirt freshman, you'd like to look sharp here for the coaches. Yeah, and he's doing that. He's, to, he's distributing the ball, and like I said, K.J. Hill is showing some nice hands. This time in traffic, where Aaron Williams had him defended pretty well, but a great throw by Joe Burrow, and another nice catch there by, by K.J. Hill. Call picks his way. Still on his feet. Demario McCall running hard again, trying to impress folks. And Nick Gary tackles him. Well, JT Barrett, a satisfying evening, Kirk. 26 of 38, 290 yards, four touchdowns, did not throw an interception, and also ran th for a 39 yards off Pacific Life game summary. Yeah, a great, a great night throwing the ball. Started early where he had to improvise, had the big throw to Curtis Samuel. Didn't have to carry the ball that much. And I know that was something that Urban Meyer wants to continue to strive to do to get Samuel and Weber more involved. Only eight carries tonight. They pop it to Hill on the end around. KJ Hill breaking free, still spinning and fighting. Cuts it back and we knocked down in the red zone. The ball came out. It's recovered by I'm telling you, Ohio State anyway. For an offense that's still looking for other playmakers besides Mike Weber and especially Curtis Samuel, KJ Hill is developing. And these reps he's getting right now and what he's showing these coaches and what they'll see on film, they're, they're going to see a young guy that is eager to make plays. And I would not be surprised to see 14 getting more and more meaningful reps as they get ready for their stretch here in November. He looks good. Only four catches coming in, but he's, he's flashed tonight. You're right. And 
Carr has looked impressive too. He's running against a, a pretty deflated defense, yeah. to be fair. Uh, but he, he is, he is uh, low center of gravity, physical back, highly touted when he came in. He's just a true freshman. Weber, obviously shoulder pads off, had that shoulder that they put some ice on. He didn't appear too concerned, which is reassuring. No. Yep. See a guy slammed down hard on the shoulder, you do you do get concerned. Burrow takes off, darts up the middle, and will score standing up. Joe Burrow finds the end zone. Barrett-like there on the burst, and the Buckeyes have gone over 60 now. And they move McCall out with a motion. Watch the linebacker go with him. He goes with him. He's a little bit unsure. And boy, did that open up with the linebacker moving out for Joe Burrow. See him kind of moving out. Chris Weber, number 49. And then he comes over late. But Joe Weber showing some speed there. 6'3, 218 pounds. Buckeyes point a minute and then some. Halfway through the final quarter. Saturday night football presented by Walmart. Save money, live better. And in part by AT&T, mobilizing your world. And the only 2017 Ford Super Duty. This is the next level. I'm going to play and shout here in the break. It's some of the students, uh, they, they stuck around kind of in mass, jumping around here. Apparently, no plans for this Saturday night. Just Stick around, watch the Buckeyes finish off this impressive performance. You know, sway back and forth, sing the alma mater, and then be headed out on High Street. Many have already headed in that direction. Yeah, I think the block O has to stay. That's part of their assignment. Is the it? game's over, yeah. Okay. What happens if you sneak out in a 59-point game? You probably lose your spot for the Michigan game. What happens if you sneak out of here in a 59-point game? No, you'll lose the spot. <laughs> don't, don't expect I would to be never invited back. <laughs> Cassidy Hubbard with your studio update. Great play in the Washington Cal game. Jake Browning launches one to John Ross. And look at this. He presses the pause button and then throws a couple get off me's and gets the 77 yard touchdown to take the 21 6 lead this game in the first over on ESPN. Chris Hervey, back to you. Jack Ross, what a player. And Cal's trying to threaten to chip away at the lead final minute of the first quarter. They got a third and goal there. That guy's in a festive mood. Terrell Newby, the starting running back, is still in there grinding away for the Cornhuskers. Just wasn't able to get the running game going here. A, a, a shock to the system, a minute and a half in, the, the pick six. They recovered and, and drove down, but they couldn't get a tying touchdown, settled for three, and then defense just could not get Ohio State off the field at all tonight. Fife overshoots Morgan. Well, our images of the day we'll focus on what happened in this conference here. Wisconsin's defense was was suffocating against a good Northwestern team on the road. And now in the driver's seat after tonight's results to get to Indianapolis. Minimal resistance from Maryland against the Maze and Blue, who of course stay undefeated. Really impressive. Penn State jumped on him as 21 nothing in a hurry, and they blew out the Hawkeyes. That is impressive. I know it was at home, but I was improving, and that was an emphatic win. And Alabama in the big showdown. Takes care of Coach O and the LSU Tigers. Fife, the completion short of the first down. Yeah, Jalen Hurts had a scramble for a touchdown. They added a late field goal, and LSU's offense just didn't do much at all tonight. No, he kind of had a feeling, as much talk as there was about LSU having this new spirit under Coach O. At the end of the day, Nick Saban had two weeks to get his defense ready, and that's a game at the battle of the line of scrimmage. And if you can't throw the ball, I don't care how good Leonard Fournette is. You're just not going to be able to run the ball. And that's that's exactly what happened again tonight to that LSU offense. Yeah, just like last year. Same. Just like the Fournette. year before that. <laughs> six straight. They averaged less than three yards a carry against Bama in the last five years. Now six years. Mario McCall retreats. That's a good punt from Lightborn and roll dead inside the 20. 
We'll talk a little bit more about the national scene. Yes. You know, the Buckeyes scored a minute and a half into this game, busted out. A lot of the folks heading across the bridge there for their Saturday evening festivities. Still 6-16 to play. And Buckeyes was 62. It's a point short of what they scored the last time Nebraska visited here. Home teams won every game, all five now in this series. Nebraska's one win was 2011 at home. And, uh, Luke Fickle was the head coach. And call again, ducking to the 25. Well, the Wolverines looming, Kirk. I mean, as much as Urban Meyer doesn't want to yet talk about it because they got road games against Maryland and Michigan State coming up. Wolverines visiting Iowa will have that game next Saturday night. Iowa will, will limp in there and you wonder what the Hawkeyes have left. I mean, it's it's a tricky test, I guess, in most years for Michigan to go to Iowa. You see any trouble next week? They got Indiana, a home game, and then, of course, come here for the finale. You know, I, I think with Michigan State being down, Iowa not having a great year, we're really not going to know how good a Michigan team they have this year until they come here. I mean, that's that's the year you find or that's the game that I think everybody was looking at. I, at the beginning of the year, you thought a trip to East Lansing and a rivalry game and a trip to Iowa City could be tricky, but there just aren't great teams this year. So I think Michigan's big test is going to be their last game of the year against the Buckeyes and Ohio State. It's a matter of Urban Meyer keeping his young team focused as all the hype and the build up is going to be about November 26th. He's got to get him ready to go to Maryland and then go to Michigan State and then they can lock in for a week and get ready for that big battle against Michigan where it's winner take all. On the right side of there you saw the the West Division scenarios Nebraska with their second conference loss will drop down to a tie with Wisconsin at four and two of course the Badgers with the overtime victory last week but would have that head to head they would have to lose the game for Nebraska to have a chance to to get to Indy. Yeah and, and I think we keep bringing it up but I know there's a big celebration right now even though it's a long way to go Wisconsin still is Illinois Purdue and Minnesota in a rivalry game but it is in Madison but then sitting there where they are right now because of this loss to Nebraska they now control because of the head to head win last week yep. against the Cornhuskers they control their own destiny and they're already sitting at number eight in this week's rankings you expect them maybe to go up to seven with the loss to Texas A&M. And they again pop it around the corner that's Corey Smith trying to make a play and he'll be hitting and drop for a loss. The job that Paul Christ has done this year has been remarkable. They were an afterthought until that opening weekend victory in, in Lambeau against LSU. He lose or Beagle was out for a while. He's back. Sitchy, the tackler's out. out. So yeah. they've been hit by the injury bug and they still keep plowing on. And let's be candid, their offense, it's still a work in progress with their young line, quarterback situation. Using both of them again today. Yeah. They've been doing it with a tenacious defense. Ken Bone made the play card over there. Did you, did you notice that? I, I did not see this. 15 minutes are about up in most places, but he's still <laughs> on, the, on the play card here. Wow, Joe Burrow's throwing, he is throwing the ball very well. Austin Mack, another true freshman, makes his second catch of the season. Burrow's dad is a college coach himself, so he defensive coordinator down at Ohio University with Frank Solich, so he's grown up in a football house and being around a coach you can tell he's plays the game with tremendous poise and they feel that once JT Barrett moves on he still has another year to play that you have Joe Burrow and also Dwayne Haskins who's a freshman this year. Big shoes to fill whenever that next word of pack is yeah. chosen. Burrow on a slant. And the catch is made. Now the ball trying to be ripped out of there by A.J. Alexander. Every throw that he has had has hit the receiver right in the chest. I mean, and I know it's mop-up duty, but when, when you're Joe Burrow, you get a chance to get it out on the, as much as you practice, a chance to get out here and play in front of the, this stadium. It's pretty nice for him to come out here six of six. And not only six of six, like I said, I mean, he's, put, he's putting it right on the numbers. Speaking of quarterbacks and numbers, I'll give you a look at the 
Nice monology hole assembled by Joe Tessitore. Another first down there, Gary McCall. And, you know, Lamar Jackson has had a pretty clear lead. 91% of the first place votes. This is among ESPN staffers, and he had another monster oh. game today. Just a mesmerizing performance. Only the 91%. That's shocking to me. <laughs> Hopefully the 9% get a, some of the video clips today from his game against Boston College, who actually is not a bad defense. 231 through the air, 185 on the ground, seven touchdowns. And he got pulled, too. He could. He didn't exactly play four quarters. It's absurd. I mean, electrifying. What a player. Call knocked down. Jabril Pepper starting to get some support as a guy who's played, you know, DB, linebacker, offense, yeah. Turner. I think I think that's it's that's the hook. It's a story. He's a great player, probably the most versatile player in the country. And he is fun to watch when he has the ball in his hands, and he's a great player on defense. But when you look at the numbers of Lamar Jackson and the team's success, it's a direct correlation to his play. I mean, to me, the, it's Lamar Jackson, and there's, at this point, there's everybody else in the country. They're singing goodbye. I could have done that an hour and a half ago. Maybe they're oh, doing that. And I'll tell you, Kirk, this scene, what we saw tonight, the, just the sheer fear and concern Armstrong knocked down hit his head so hard as Samantha reported he was knocked unconscious trainers and the doctors cutting off his jersey and his shoulder pads after a lengthy period of time he was put on the board taken to an ambulance just to a, a hospital and then a short time later in the third quarter he comes running back out on the field almost miraculously hugging his teammates as the crowd chants Tommy both Ohio State and Nebraska fans I, it's greatest news, greatest news of the night to see him come back into this stadium and to see how energetic he was to get back to his team. He knew he wasn't going to play. He just wanted to be there for his guys. And he's certainly a bright spot and what was a nightmarish night for Nebraska on the scoreboard here. 62-6. The Buckeyes actually got their winning points on a pick six a minute and a half into the game. Big night for JT Barrett. And you get the stats and more highlights on the Ford wrap up after the game with Cassidy Hubbard. JT Barrett embracing Tommy Armstrong. A lot of the Ohio State players coming over. Happy to see that he's okay. A couple of Texans there. Nebraska will now need some help to get to Indy, which was their preseason goal. The result of this game aside, it's still a a positive season in Lincoln. They'll try to regroup and hope that Wisconsin does stumble down the stretch. Samuel was brilliant again, touching the ball frequently and with almost electric results every time. Speaking of Heisman, he's probably a guy that's going to start to gain some momentum and get into the into the race. Buckeyes head to the end zone to lock arms and sway to the alma mater. Buckeyes bust out tonight. And beat down the Cornhuskers 62 to 3. Tonight's game produced by Bill Bennell, directed by Derek Mobley for our entire crew. From Mike Black, Mark Amento, Darren Brown, our folks in the booth. Thanks for watching. Michigan and Iowa. Big Ten battle coming up on Saturday night of fall a week from tonight. Time now for the Fort Wrap-Up Show. And let's throw it back in the studio to Cassidy Harbor. So long from Columbus.